Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Special Guest, Respected Chair of the Session, Respected Director General BISS, Excellences, Distinguished Guest, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon to you all. On behalf of Bangladesh Institute of International and Strategic Studies, BIISS, may I take this opportunity to welcome you all to today's seminar on Bangladesh India Relations Confluence of Ideologies and Evolving Perspectives, organized by BIISS. Today, we are very much honored to have amongst us His Excellency Mr. Muhammad Sharia Alam MP, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of People's Republic of Bangladesh, as Chief Guest. We are also honored to have Dr. Arvind Gupta, Director, Vivekananda International Foundation, as a special guest. Dear audience, today's program will be chaired by Ambassador Kachi Imtiaz Hussain, Chairman, BIISS. The session will begin with a welcome address by Major General Mohammad Maksudur Rahman, OSP, BSP, PSC, Director General, BIISS. We will have to, after that, we'll have two presentations by Dr. Mahfuz Kobi, Research Director, BIISS, and Dr. Sriyadha Datta, Center Head, Neighborhood Studies, and Senior Fellow of Vivekananda International Foundation. This will be followed by an open discussion session. Then we will have remarks by Mr. ASM Samsul Arifin, Chairman, Bangladesh Foundation for Regional Studies, BR, BFRS, after the open discussion. We are also very pleased to announce that today's open to, uh, program will include the launching ceremony of the book titled India Bangladesh Bonomi at 50, 1971 and present, edited by Dr. Siratha Ratta. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Chair of the Session, Ambassador Kaji Imtia Sosen, to kindly commence the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, assalamu alaikum, distinguished guests. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are very, very pleased to have you all. And I would also like to welcome at the same time uh, participants uh, who have joined us uh, virtually. Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency Mr. Sharia Alam, MP, State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh. Honorable Special Guest, uh, Dr. Arvind Gupta, Director of Vivekananda International Foundation. Lieutenant General, R.K. Soini, PVSM, AVSM uh, Center uh, Head, National Security and Strategic Studies and Internal Security Studies. Mr. ASM Samsur Arifin, Chairman, Bangladesh Foundation for Regional Studies. Uh, we have two distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Dr. Mahfuz Kabir and uh, Dr. Sri Radha Dato. Sri Radha Dato uh, is a very known face uh, in, in Bangladesh. And uh, we would be uh, listening to uh, our distinguished panelists uh, as we proceed. Uh, certainly, uh, it's a great honor and privilege for, uh, for me and, and for the Institute to welcome the distinguished guests, especially our chief guest, uh, uh, the uh, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, Mr. Mohammad Sharia Alam MP. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, before we start uh, the proceeding of our day, uh, I would like to request uh, our Director General of the Institute, uh, Major General Maksudur Rahman, to deliver his welcome remarks. Uh, General Rahman will be joining us uh, virtually. Major General Maksudur Rahman, you have the floor. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Mr. Sharia Alam, MP, State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Honorable Special Guest, Dr. Arvind Gupta, Director, Vivekanan International Foundation, Chairman, National Human Rights Commission. Respected Chairman, Ambassador Kaji Imtiaz Hussain, learned panelists, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon to you all. On behalf of Bangladesh Institute of International and Strategic Studies, I welcome you all in today's seminar on Bangladesh-India relations, confluence of ideas and evolving perspectives. Our heartfelt gratitude to the honorable chief guest, 
and the special guest for gracing today's occasion. At this moment, I would like to pay our profound tributes to the memory of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and to all martyrs who laid their lives for the independence of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the relation between Bangladesh and India are based on shared history, culture, language, value of secularism and democracy. During the liberation war of Bangladesh in 1971, India extended critical support to Bangladesh by providing military assistance and shelter to 10 million refugees. And for your kind information, I am one of those 10 million refugees, those who got sheltered in India during 1971. India was one of the first country to recognize the sovereignty of Bangladesh and established diplomatic relation immediately after its independence. Since then, mutual respect for independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and strong political will from both the sides contributed substantially to strengthen these ties. In the last couple of years, both countries have developed a remarkable understanding in the areas of security, trade and commerce, power and energy, transport and connectivity, science and technology, defense, river and maritime affairs. One of the significant achievement of our bilateral relation is the implementation of the land border agreement, exchange of enclaves and peaceful settlement of maritime boundary dispute. Dear participants, remarkable progress has also been made in trade and investment. Bangladesh is the biggest trading partner of India in South Asia. In the fiscal year 2019-20, the two-way trade volume crossed 10 billion US dollar. India's export to Bangladesh account for more than 85% of the total bilateral trade, that is almost 8.5 billion. Bangladesh is now the largest recipient of the line of credit funds from India. Besides, cooperation in the power sector has become one of the hallmark of bilateral relation. Bangladesh is importing 1160 megawatt of power from India to meet its demand. Connectivity has also become a priority for India and Bangladesh. Two countries are trying to establish the old linkage. Recently, they reopened the old railway link of Chilahati, Paldabari, and inaugurated Dhaka, New Jalpaiguri, passenger train, Shadinata Sharok, and Mochishito. Furthermore, cooperation between the armed forces of the two countries has been continuously rising through the different programs, including defense dis discussion, joint training, and drill. For the first time in the history, Tri-Service Contingent of Bangladesh joined India's 2021 Republic Day Parade. Distinguished guests, the relations have further enhanced through regular high-level visit and exchanges since the last decade. Prime Minister of both the countries participated in a summit-level virtual meeting in 2020. They signed seven MU and agreements in various sectors, including hydrocarbons, agriculture, trade, development project, and heritage conservation. In March 2021, His Excellency Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, participated in the Golden Jubilee of Bangladesh Independence and the birth centenary of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. In order to celebrate 50 years of the diplomatic relationship, both leaders decided to commemorate December 6 as Mochi Dibos, that is the Friendship Day. These initiatives will certainly add momentum to our bilateral relations. Ladies and gentlemen, against this backdrop, bees recognized this seminar, bees organized this seminar 
to understand the different aspect of Bangladesh India bilateral relations and how both countries can work together for their mutual benefits and prosperity. I am really delighted to mention that Bangladesh and India have celebrated 50 years of their relationship. And I hope this friendship will reach new heights in the future. Finally, again, I express my gratitude to the honorable chief guest, the special guest, distinguished panelists, and the learned audience for encouraging us with your kind presence. Thank you very much. Thanks for your passion sharing. Joy Bangla. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. General Paul, uh, for your welcome remarks. Uh, we are also very pleased to have amongst us uh, honorable members of parliament, members of the standing committee, uh, former ambassadors, uh, and uh, other distinguished presidents. I see a very strong presence of uh, the media personalities there. And then uh, again, like to uh, extend my uh, very warm welcome. Uh, as as uh, was uh, stated in the uh, beginning, uh, we will have a true presentation from uh, two distinguished speakers. You will be followed by uh, a, an open uh, session for question and answer and observations from the floor. Uh, we would also have uh, our online uh, platform uh, for uh, raising the, uh, making the question from the participants. Uh, we will have Further, uh, two more uh, remarks, if I may say so. Uh, one from uh, Lieutenant General R.K. Soni, uh, former Deputy Chief of Army Staff India, and uh, Major uh, ASM uh, Shamsul Arifin, uh, Chair of uh, Regional uh, Studies, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, but before I uh, request our two panelists uh, of today uh, to uh, make the presentation, I would like to uh, briefly share uh, some of, uh, of my thoughts uh, on, on our uh, very robust and strong partnership, uh, the Bangladesh-India relationship. Uh, 51 years ago, on 26th of March, the father of the nation, Bongo Mundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, declared the independence of Bangladesh. On this auspicious occasion, as we end, come to the end of uh, this auspicious month of March, I pay my humble tribute and homage to the father of the nation, whose lifelong struggle and visionary leadership brought us our independence. I also pay my, pay my deep homage to 3 million martyrs and 400,000 women and girls who made a supreme sacrifice for our independence. I would also like to express our thanks and gratitude to the people and government of India for their support and sacrifices in our war of liberation. Bangladesh-India relation is deeply rooted in the history, civilization, language, and culture. Over the last half a century, the relations between the two neighbors have strengthened, deepened, and expanded in various areas of mutual interest. Being the next door, door neighbors, the life and destiny of our peoples are intertwined and interlinked. Accordingly, the foreign policy orientation and approaches of the two countries have also evolved progressively with increasing realization of the importance this relation mean to each of us. Although there has been ups and downs in the relationship, it is quite natural. Since 2009, the two countries have forged a strong partnership in multiple areas of mutual interest. Particularly in the last 13 years, the upward trajectory of bilateral relations has gathered significant momentum and the relationship has attained a high degree of maturity. This is evident from the extensive list of areas where the two countries have expanded and deepened their relation and cooperation. The cooperation in physical connectivity, energy and power generation, development cooperation, education and culture exchanges in the cyberspace, defense and security have joined the long list of traditional uh, uh, areas such as trade, investment, tourism, cooperation in, in the water sharing. The implementation of land boundary agreement and the exchange of enclaves and the peaceful settlement of maritime boundary have removed some lingering irritation that existed before. Bangladesh has also effectively addressed the security concerns of our neighbor, India. The Ganges Water Sharing Treaty is another example of cooperative mindset of the two neighbors. As the largest recipient of uh, COVID-19 vaccine from India, Bangladesh is very appreciative of the support extended by the government of India 
to address the health challenges posed by the pandemic. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt of goodwill and good intention to further intensify the excellent bilateral relations with both sides. To sustain the momentum of upward trajectory in the bilateral relations, however, it is important to take effective steps to resolve some of the pending issues and take the relationship to a higher, greater height. In the next hour or so, we hope to get ideas and recommendations as what more can be done to make the relationships enduring and rewarding based on equality and camaraderie and transform the Bangladesh India relation, a model of bilateral cooperation and collaboration. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, with those few words, may I now call upon Dr. Mahfuz Kabi, Research Director of the Institute, to share his thoughts on India Bangladesh relations and the topic. You've seen is uh, the conflict of ideologies and evolving perspective. Okay. Dr. Kabir. Thank you, uh, respected uh, chair of uh, Bangladesh Institute of International Studies, Strategy Studies, honorable chief guest, uh, special guest, uh, chair of the institute and director general of the institute, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would welcome you to my presentation on Bangladesh India cooperation. Basically, I'll be focusing on an Trade and developmental, uh, economic and developmental issues uh, from definitely Bangladesh perspective. Yes. So, as mentioned by uh, our Director General and also uh, by the Chair, so Bangladesh and India has a very deep uh, rooted relationship. So, across all the, in fact, uh, dimensions of, of cooperation and, and friendship. So, uh, I would like to say that basically two issues one is the uh, independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and strong political will. These are the four areas where mutual respect and recognition is existing. And there's a common platform like a SAG, Bimstek, BBI, and IRA, uh, where both the countries are the members. So we, uh, and they work on the uh, common areas of cooperation. And definitely we have a long common border. It's uh, 4,096 kilometers. Even though we have some out factors uh, in border management and informal uh, or uh, irregular uh, migration and, and water sharing, still we are enjoying a lot of, in fact, uh, cooperation and, and also improvement in the relationship in, in border management. And as already mentioned, it's, we had a long pending land and maritime border dispute, but it has, has been solved very amicably. And it's one of the historical achievements of, uh, in, the, in the relationship between the two countries. Now, uh, basically there are, in fact, enabling factors, in fact, uh, in, in the cooperation between the two countries, especially in the developmental area, uh, trade and, and other areas of mutual interest. So if we can consider some of the issues, like, I mean, the, both the countries are enjoying rapid economic growth and, and also uh, developing in, in human dimensions. And, and the, there is a trade, in fact, along the value chains. So we have very strong value chain uh, uh, cooperation and we have the geographical proximity, which is not only in the, in the trade and development, but also in the other areas of cooperation like uh, cultural, like educational, scientific, and, and other areas of cooperation. And we have the strong, in fact, investment linkages. Now Indian uh, companies are, uh, in fact, investing in not only in the EPZ, but also in the special economic zone. There, is, there are three, in fact, dedicated special economic zones, and, and basically in Mongla and in wherever, and, and also now they're investing in Bangabandhu, Sheikh Mujib, Shilpon, Nagor. So, uh, that's also an important area of uh, cooperation and also expanding trade complementarities. Uh, previously, we were talking about the competition between the two countries, but now we are having the complementarity and, and boosting the trade and, and other areas of development cooperation. And now if we see, so it's very surprising uh, data in, in the Export Promotion Bureau. So now uh, we, in, if we consider the data of the last eight months, so the Export from Bangladesh is crossing 1.3 billion US dollars. So by the end of this fiscal year, I, I expect that it would be more than 2 billion US dollars. So it's, it's outstanding achievement so that we are going to experience. And if we consider diff different scenarios, I, I calculate the scenarios. So if the, in fact, the growth rate is 20%, even though in the, uh, in the, uh, the fiscal year, the current fiscal year, the growth rate was about 60% with outstanding uh, kind of uh, growth in exports from Bangladesh to India. So if the trade continues, then it's, it's just a matter of time uh, to become the export. Uh, uh, so in uh, more than 5 billion US dollars in just 
five years. Now there is another kind of magnificent magnificent achievement. So in the uh, two last two years, so uh, if we see the the pattern of in fact export growth, so in the world the growth that even though the uh, both the countries are struggling, but uh, Bangladesh has achieved uh, more uh, kind of uh, uh, the recovery from the COVID-19, but still both the countries are doing very well. So from Bangladesh to India, the export growth was higher than the export growth from Bangladesh to the world. So that is another kind of remarkable thing. And if we uh, see the, the kind of the, the pattern of, uh, in fact, export items, then even though in the last uh, five, six years, there is a, a kind of diversification, but the rapid diversification is taking place. And we are not now, in fact, uh, only concentrating on the RNGs, but there are other products coming in the export basket of Bangladesh. So it's not only item HS61 and 62 that are RNGs, but also uh, like the agricultural product, the, the food items, the uh, other things like I mean, the home textiles, and even iron and steel and chemical products. So these are also coming in the, the export basket. So we're enjoying, gradually enjoying the diversification in the, in the, within the export items. So diversification means greater stability as, as a destination of Bangladeshi products. So, and, and because of the, in fact, duty-free access to the, almost all the products in the Indian market. So we are enjoying these uh, benefits. And, and also we are in the, expecting, uh, uh, in fact, early, in fact, commencement of the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement uh, that's called SEPA. So we are expecting, uh, so the study is going on from, both from the Bangladesh side and also Indian side. So we're expecting uh, it. Uh, and it, it would be a guarantor in the secured market, Indian market, after graduation uh, from the LDCs. So uh, that is the thing. But if we consider the export of services, so we are also doing very well in, in Indian market. So, and, but the problem is that, so uh, the, in fact, the sectors in which we are exporting the services. So these are not that kind of high tech or knowledge products. So, uh, so that is a problem, but still in the, in the categories, like, I mean, the construction services so is big uh, kind of sector. And, and also the office maintenance, basically the, the public related service and also the technical trade relationship and business services, ad advertising, legal. So these are the areas in which they, there's a strong, uh, in fact, complementarity. And, and the, these are the areas in which we export service and, and, and also they import the services. So we are experiencing a positive kind of trend. And if we see the volume, so it's, it's uh, significant. But there are, in fact, restrictive uh, environment in it's not only in Bangladesh, but also in India. So uh, that's a, a, a kind of problem. If we consider the case of uh, non-terry barriers and, and paratary barriers, so these are existing. So even though the, in fact, the market uh, in India is duty free, but the, in fact, the presence of uh, terry, in fact, non-terry and paratary barriers, so these are still existing. So it, it may be because of the, in fact, lack of, in fact, exchange of information among the businesses. So that's a big problem. There are studies, but the problem is that the, even though the business people, they in fact generally raise the issue of, of non tariff and paradigm barriers, but when they are in fact asked the question and specifically asked the, uh, to raise the issue, they cannot in fact specifically mention that. And, uh, and because of that, because of lack of exchange of information, so this, I mean, the non tariff and paradigm barriers are uh, in fact existing. And, and because of that, we, in fact, even though uh, the, in fact, the trade regime is open, but still in uh, Bangladesh uh, cannot, in fact, utilize the full potential. And then if we consider the trade, in fact, uh, related, in fact, investment, so the situation is improving uh, significantly. And so during the COVID-19, the FDI from India was declining, but it recovered very significantly in the last fiscal year. So now the position of uh, India in terms of FDI is the eighth. So, uh, so it, the volume of, in fact, uh, investment from India is increasing in terms of, in fact, amount. 
So now it's 5.2 percent of the total, in fact, net FDI inflow. Uh, and there's a significant thing. Another thing is very surprising. There is an outward FDI. So that's uh, the outward FDI. If we uh, see the, the sectors, one is financial intermediaries and the mining and querying. So these are the two sectors in, in which the formal investment is going. And India is the fourth largest destination of Bangladesh's outward FDI. Yeah. So it's after UK, Hong Kong, and Nepal. So it's, it's going on very, in fact, welcoming approach. And the, in fact, Bangladesh Central Bank is allowing the formal FDI in, in selected destination is one, and India is one of that. And there is another, in fact, developmental uh, areas of development cooperation. So the Indian line, lines of credit. So now the uh, third line of credit is uh, being implemented. And uh, in fact, total, in fact, uh, amount is uh, 7.86 billion US dollar uh, in the line of credit, but there are in fact another uh, issue uh, is that uh, we can uh, say that it's again in out, out factor. One is the in fact stringent uh, 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 kind of terms. So one is the uh, procurement terms, like I mean this 75% uh, in fact procurement should be done from the Indian side. So with the limited tendering method and only 25% uh, would be done locally. And 1% rate of interest plus 0.5% uh, in fact commitment fee. But still it's better than the Chinese loan because in Chinese loan, the, in fact the terms are stringent plus 2% rate of interest with limited grace period. But if we comp compare the two, in fact, uh, kind of source of the loan, Indian, uh, in fact, LOC is better. There is another thing is slow rate of implementation. So if we consider the grace period, then definitely it up the grace period. So uh, there is a problem and, and there is a cost escalation because of that. And there is another thing. So uh, there's a lack of experience of handling. So uh, in fact, bigger uh, tank of loans. So that is another thing that uh, in fact causes the delay of, of implementation. But if we consider the whole landscape, of, of the development of cooperation, the trade and investment, then it, it's not a big, big deal because it, once the, in fact, the projects are implemented and if the both countries are in fact uh, taking the benefits, then definitely it, it would be a good area and new way even of cooperation. And in fact, if, if we consider the, the whole, in fact, value chain, the trade complementarity, in fact, the congenial environment and developing uh, uh, new areas, then definitely, in fact, there is a good potential in the coming years uh, to have more in, uh, integrated kind of developmental approach between the two countries. Now, given this broad, broad backdrop, so I'd like to suggest, in fact, a eight point agenda in, in order to advance the cooperation between the two countries in the development and, and economic cooperation. So one is to attract Indian investment to, uh, uh, to increase exports. So now if we see the, the level of development and uh, in fact, per capita income of, of the two countries. So India uh, is experiencing a, in fact, growth of, of in fact, middle class and, and the consumer groups who need, in fact, uh, the, in fact, cheap, but quality Bangladeshi product, which can be in fact produced in uh, Bangladesh and it can be imported by India. So, and that in fact can meet the demand of the Indian consumers. So, and we have to have a post LDC, in fact, a strategy. So, even though we are expecting early commencement of the SEPA, but still, in fact, uh, there is uncertainty. So, it cannot be, in fact, it may not be, in fact, uh, as per the, in fact, expectation of Bangladeshi side. So, there needs to be a kind of guaranteed, in fact, environment. So, DTP environment in India. So, that can be done. So, and the other thing is to soften the terms and increase implementation rate of the LOC, uh, in fact, projects. So there are, in fact, uh, complaints and allegations, but if the rate of implementation is increased, then definitely the cost would be reduced, and then we, we can enjoy the grace period of the uh, implementation of the projects. And we have to identify new products, even though there are diversification, but we are depending on fewer, in fact, uh, categories of the products and, and also services. So we have to have the high tech export uh, from Bangladesh and, and also the high high tech, uh, in fact, 
technology and capital intensive products that we need to uh, export. And we have to, in fact, address the uh, non tariff and uh, paratary barriers. So, and, and even though India is, is giving the duty free access, but still, I mean, the uh, non tariff and paratary barriers are, in fact, uh, jeopardizing the whole, in fact, benefit. And we have to have a strengthened cooperation between the two standard institutes, in fact, uh, uh, Bureau of India Standards and the Bangladesh uh, Standard and Testing Institute, the DSTI. So there is still ongoing cooperation, but we have to achieve an international standard. So, so that and the, India has a very, in fact, high experience in, in terms of standardization of their products. So they have requirements. So if there is an, a strengthened cooperation between the two standard institutes, then Bangladeshi product can easily enter the market and the, in fact, barriers like, I mean, the uh, non-tariff and parity barriers should be addressed. And the postal shipping agreement. So we have that, but it, it should be, in fact, uh, made viable. So that's a very important thing. And we need to seek India's technical support and investment to develop tourism sector. So India has a wide experience in, in terms of uh, that tourism sector, so it, Bangladesh can, in fact, solve its, its, its support. So, and the final thing is the friendship day. So, uh, the 6th December, we understand, but I think we uh, all the days are in fact friendship day between the two countries. So, with this, I would like to uh, in fact, conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Joy Bangla. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mahfuz. Uh, for uh, highlighting the, the potential as well as uh, a way out to increase our bilateral uh, trade. Uh, may I now request uh, Dr. Sri Radha Dakta to kindly come over the podium and uh, make her presentation. Dr. Dakta. Uh. Thank you, Chair, all the dignitaries, friends, and colleagues. Uh, I'm always nostalgic when I'm in this because I began my first conference in Bangladesh with a BIS conference way back in 1999, if I'm not mistaken. And I've come back many times after then, since then, but it's always such a pleasure to be here. Uh, Dr. Mehfuz has focused a lot on um, uh, economic and commerce and trade, which is, of course, the core underbelly of the Indian population. But let me just go back right now. For the last one year, we've seen the kind of bond homie that has existed between the two states in terms of the leadership, the kind of visits we've had, which it's unprecedented, three high-level visits in a year. I don't ever recall India celebrating any such 50 years with any neighbor other than Bangladesh. Of course, there's a huge historical background to that, but this is absolutely unprecedented, the kind of level, the kind of friendship that we enjoy here. At this particular cusp that we stand, India and Bangladesh has never seen a more stable partnership than ever before. And I'm very convinced about the fact that no matter what Mujibur Rahman and Indira Gandhi had envisaged, uh, in terms of close cooperation 1971, the kind of uh, sectors that we've handled in the last uh, 10 plus years, ever since India and Bangladesh signed the cooperation, um, uh, joint communique of uh, a cooperative framework 2010, which really laid out the basis of the bilateral relation that we enjoy here, has taken it to heights, which is unprecedented, and I'm sure both of them are uh, somewhere enjoying and understanding and I think appreciating the kind of levels that we've taken to. Uh, let me look at the broad picture. Um, I think it goes without saying uh, the fact that we are standing here celebrating 50 years of Bangladesh, 100 years of Moji Borsho. So there is obviously a strong ideological connect. Uh, India has always, uh, you know, been one of uh, appreciating the kind of effort that Bangladesh does in, the, in terms of uh, ensuring democracy. There are, of course, periodic elections being held. There are some ups and downs we've noticed over the years. But by and large, the big picture is in place there. And in terms of the secular fabric, I think every leader in Bangladesh has constantly assured India about that particular ethos that we connect with Bangladesh so well. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that there are ups and downs uh, that happens in a South Asia, 
a complex quagmire. Uh, we, we don't have monolith population in any of our countries. Uh, so they're bound to be some kind of other, you know, irritants at times. But the large picture at the political, at the leadership level is something that we all converge on. And I think there is absolutely no, no two questions about that. Uh, the, any bilateral relationship is at various levels. I always say it's like an onion. You peel one layer, there's another pair. But broadly, I would say it's state to state, government to government, people to people. And again, standing here in 2022, March, I don't think we've ever seen such kind of cooperation at any level. Uh, the governments, the kind of sectors the government is working on, uh, you know, social sectors, political sectors, economic sectors, defense sectors, which is completely unheard of earlier. Uh, so the fact that we've been able to reach there is something which is certainly a you know, thing to acknowledge and to take that forward. Uh, having been a student of international politics, working in Bangladesh, one often has heard about the fact, and I myself have written about it, how the leadership is converging, the governments are converging. There are broad sectors and themes they're converging on, but are we losing the people to people connect? Uh, I'll tell you what has happened, and I keep thinking about this. Uh, the kind of interaction we have at the level of literature, at the level of music, at the level of any other you know, arts and aesthetics, uh, is again, we don't keep a number of it, uh, but we know every single artist from Bangladesh is appreciated. A huge band by A.R. Rahman was here in Bangladesh yesterday. All of you enjoyed the music. So that is a constant interaction that we do. But what has changed in the present is that the new media, the social media, has taken the narrative to another place. I think we need to appreciate that, that while the people-to-people -people contact, whether that's medical level, whether that's tourism level, whether that's commercial shopping level, is something that we all have you know, seen, it's growing. It's certainly growing. I mean, we, we've just heard in the morning that uh, 20, 2019, I think India issued 2.2 million visas, uh, which of course has hugely contributed to the economy of India. I'm absolutely convinced about the fact a, because of medical tourism, and also I'm aware of the fact that no social event in Bangladesh takes place without shopping in India. So there is a huge element that, that exists, in, exists between the two countries. But what we need to understand also that between India and Bangladesh, I mean, it, again, as I said, it's not a monolithic population, and every vibrant democracy has to have varied political parties, which is exactly the case maybe here. And there are voices, there will always be naysayers. Yesterday I had a talk at CPD, some of my friends who were present there is here. I've been very badly trolled since last night about my talk, uh, all because I said what I said. But the point of the matter is here, but that's just, there, there is that kind of people there. They exist everywhere. But it, to allow a little you know, negative voices to cloud the relationship is something that is uh, I think, you know, being really unrealistic about it. Because I think for the first time, India and Bangladesh are not only bilateral partners, they are showcasing how you can make regionalism work in South Asia, which has never happened in, region, in South Asia. Started. But if you look at the kind of infrastructure development, the cross-border facilities, having signed BIN, very delayed, uh, I'm a huge critic of BIN, of course, because we're still grappling from 2015 when we signed the agreement, to deciding the MOU just a month ago. Uh, we are still grappling with the modalities on the ground which are not in place. We South Asians move at a slow pace. I mean, let's accept that. Let's not blame each other. The point here I want to make here is that India and Bangladesh have never been poised at a more stable position. Let's work on that to take it forward. There's bound to be friction. We have friction within our own families. If you look at India, every state is having some fight over the other, for water, for all kinds of other reasons. So to have, and I'm aware of the gaps that exist, it's a work in progress. I'm aware of the fact that uh, water is the most emotive bilateral issue. And uh, I think we've not often sent the right signals. We talked about a basin management in 2010 joint work, joint communique. In 2022, we still talk about it. So clearly, there's a delay in many core sectors. Uh, there are, of course, outstanding issues on the border too. I'm aware of that. But the point is, let not few irritants take away the big picture. The big picture here is that the two fastest growing country in the in nations in Asia has to work together because I think over the last 12 years, we've realized that working together is the way forward. There is no way that we can work 
without being interdependent on each other. And the kind of detailing that Mahfuz did in terms of the economic interdependence that is growing, which will take it forward. Of course, there are many, many points of you know, discussion here. Why is it that the largest our trade is still through Benapol, Petropol, which is so overused, overutilized, while a whole lot of other trading points like Akhara Agartala, which is a fabulous international standard ICP in place, we barely have any trade movement. I mean, there's obviously a mafia syndicate in place, and I think both sides are aware of it, but why are we not able to crack that? Why is it only during pandemic that we were able to use the train services, uh, which is used by passenger constantly? So obviously there's some gap, and I, I believe in South Asia, I mean, Dhaka is a, a complete real example of that, that roads have to be freed up for tourism and for people movement. Cargo has to move to railways and waterways. Uh, Bangladesh, of course, has used its inland waterways absolutely efficiently. We un unfortunately have not been able to replicate that. We've got many agreements. We keep adding to the agreements. But in terms, terms to actualization, any of that, nothing works on the ground. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a non-starter for us. But we really need to. And I'm just saying that let's look at the kind of achievements you've done in the last 10, 12 years. It's unprecedented. Let's work on that. There are irritants, there are issues. Uh, everyone knows that Facebook is full of the naysayers. Uh, the problem is then when we have a happy moment, we don't share it. The moment we have a you know irritation, we share it. I'm absolutely convinced of the fact that my CPD talk was appreciated to many. Uh, I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying that of the response that I got from the floor yesterday. So, but I didn't have that many people picking me on my Twitter. But the kind of people who trolled me on Twitter is plenty. But that is not going to take me away. And I, I mean, I just want to say here that the 50 years of Bangladesh, the kind of achievement is done in terms of the middle, going to the middle income country, moving from the LDC. Uh, this is not to brag too much, but there were two Indians, me included, who had the first book in Bangladesh at 50. And every time I'm here, everybody's lauded me for that book that happened. It's, it's not about being an Indian or a Bangladeshi. It's about a South Asian identity that we all have. And we all own that South Asian identity. And which is that identity which is going to take us forward. I think it's time. And there's always going to be when I keep, whenever I talk to the youngsters, which I did for the last three days, I kept saying, instead of quibbling on both sides, that you didn't deliver this, you didn't do this as promised. Let's work on having solutions ahead. Okay, that didn't happen. What can happen now? There'll be water issues. Every time there'll be a new issue coming to the forefront. But I think we have to change the mental maps in terms of addressing problems. It has to be a solution-based issue. Instead of, you know, I think our generation's full of that. I didn't do this. And I, it is like a tick mark that, you know, you know, I've actually been able to tell you what are the things you didn't deliver. What are the promises that you didn't do? Uh, we've done that enough. I think we have to go beyond that. 50 years now is a good time to think afresh and see how we can uh, converge on great many things which are lying ahead. The partnership that we enjoy in South Asia has to now reach out to a larger Asia. And I'll conclude here by saying that I think India and Bangladesh can do what no other neighbors in South Asia can. And this is just the beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Radha. Dr. Radha, as you all know, is the uh, uh, center head, uh, neighborhood studies, uh, and senior fellow of Vivekanand uh, International Foundation. Thank you, Radha, for, for your uh, excellent presentation. And you very, very rightly pointed out and said that uh, with, with uh, great conviction that what Bangladesh and India could do, nobody else can do. And I'm sure that there are enough reason and, and uh, argument for holding that view. We share that uh, view of yours as well. Uh, we would now like to open the floor for uh, questions and, and, and comments. And uh, may I uh, request you uh, to, uh, to take the floor, but uh, uh, introduce yourself uh, for our record keepers. When they write the report, they can uh, correctly uh, take down your names and, and your uh, designation. Uh, I will uh, first request uh, Ambassador uh, Munshu Faiz who has raised the hand, and then I will go uh, to the gentleman in the corner. Uh, uh, please pardon me for not knowing uh, each and every one of you by face. I'm sure I will get to uh, know you once you introduce yourself. Ambassador Munshu Faiz, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I did a Good job by taking this decision to come here today, because uh, her two very um, 
enlightening presentations. And of course, the introductions were also equally rich. However, like whenever people speak, you can always ask questions and I'm very naughty at that. I keep asking questions. So I would like to ask a few questions. The topic says confluence of ide ideologies. Evolving perspectives, I think there was quite a bit of evolving perspectives in the two presentations, but I didn't hear much about the confluence of ideologies. What does it mean and what ideologies do you, do you look at? Uh, or is it really necessary that we have to have confluence of ideologies? Ideas maybe, but ideologies, I'm not so sure. So I would like to hear from the uh, presenters and others present here, other uh, guests uh, on this point. Because I think ideologies, my ideology is with me, her ideology is with her, and your ideology is with you. But still, we can work well and in a very friendly way. And that is how the world goes, goes on. If we don't do that, if we start saying that you have a bad ideology and I have a good ideology, we start wars. And that is something that we do not want. There was something that uh, I, th I think Mahfuz uh, mentioned about complementarities in trade. It's a good thing if we have it, but do we really have a lot of complementarities? I would like to hear a little bit more. Or is it that because India is so big and Bangladesh is placed in a particular area, so it gives advantage to some of our products to go to certain parts of India, and that helps our exports to India. Not necessarily that we produce different things. It's not necessarily complementarities, but it was. Uh, it is maybe that uh, uh, we, in many ways, uh, produce the same things, but there is a lot of uh, demand for them, and we can continue to produce it and also uh, supply each other, uh, depending on where it is required. Then another important issue that was brought up was the bonhomi, that uh, Sri Radha's uh, favorite word, I think, Yes, there's a lot of one of in there, but I think when we speak of that, we should not lose track of the various uh, uh, contradictory developments that take place, which uh, tend to vitiate uh, the efforts, uh, vitiate the atmosphere and uh, tries to divert our efforts in many ways. So th those are some, some of the things that we must not lose uh, track of. And, there, I think she also recognized this when she mentioned about the com complex quagmire. And th that I think was very good. But I, I should like to uh, differ slightly on what she said about defense cooperation, unheard of before. That's not true. There was a period when it was not available, but India-Bangladesh uh, relations, I mean, uh, cooperation in defense started Bangladesh's war of independence if we look at it. And then for some years after that, we continued to our uh, uh, defense, uh, uh, I mean, the military organizations, they all were set up with Indian help after our independence. They didn't have anything. So we used a lot of Indian assistance to actually build them up. But there was a period in between, things soured up and didn't uh, go as was expected. But now we are talking about it again. And here, I think it's very important to remember that uh, as a close and big neighbor, India should be able to be uh, big enough to allow Bangladesh and her other neighbors enough space so that we can make our own choices about what we want to do. And that, in that, that will actually ensure that our relations remain at a good place and it will flourish over the years. But, the moment things are being, I mean, if, you, if people start to have a perception that uh, we are being dictated to, things will sour up. So that is something that one should be uh, careful about. And the last point that I want to make is that start a non-starter. Why should it be a non-starter? India, we, I believe that India deserves a place as a leader regionally and globally. And... Uh, SARC, if India can help this uh, South Asian countries to reinvigorate SARC and make it a success, 
India's leadership will be ensured. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, in the interest of time, uh, I would, uh, sir, I will give you a floor, but one um, 10 seconds observation. In the interest of time, if, if, if you could kindly uh, restrict your time to, uh, to two minutes. So we have got a, a number of participants, both online and so. And uh, if you could precisely uh, pose your question, if you have, otherwise your observation is also very welcome. Sir, you have the floor. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm retired Air Commodore Ishfaq. I've been coming here for the last, I think, more than two decades. And uh, very uh, important presentation from both Dr. Mahfuz Kabir and Sri Dada Dutta. I would, uh, on, the, on the confluence of ideology, that's what I was really looking for. And I will take it here that, yes, there are serious, my confluence of ideologies is very important in our relationship. And it has been on for thousands of years. Our Buddhist, you know, Buddhism to Hinduism to Islam, Islam in Bengal, and in, in, in fact, whole of India is highly influenced by all these uh, ideologies. And in Bengal, especially the Sufism and Vaishnavis, these are just uh, two parts of the same coin. And I would recall here our Lalon Shah, Shitalong Shah, you know, Shah Abdul Karim, uh, all these people, you know, they, they have uh, brought in that sort of, a, a sort of, uh, you know, a confluence of ideas within this region. And for example, our national poet, uh, Nazrul Islam, hundreds of Shama Shangit, uh, he has done. And he, in fact, he was doing Shama Shangit long before he started writing about Islamic songs, many years before that. So in fact, I, I was looking more towards these ideas that yes, in Bangladesh, and in fact, whole of South Asia is actually a confluence of ideologies. And if we can work on that, I, I think Vivekananda Institute works on that, that uh, you know, bringing the people together in our ideologies and culture, that will be, that will be a great job done. And about uh, connectivity, of course, I am a very, uh, uh, I have always been talking about it, and she's uh, rather that is right that why Chittagong is still not becoming the, uh, you know, uh, port for the whole of India Northeast. We have gone for uh, Agartala railway line, but we also need to revive the old railway line from Kulaura to Latu. This project has been taken up, but down, lying in the sort of dormant. And that will give us a di another access and more direct access rather than taking the hill road, hill railway line through the Agartala. And, whole of Northeast can be better off if they use Chittagong port and we'd be of course benefited. And one small irritant that I, I'd like to bring it here because people have been talking about irritants also. Recently I read a uh, uh, research article of about 10,000 words on India's river connectivity. They are trying to still that at least that, I don't know it's official or not, but the researcher is talking about connecting Brahmaputra along with Ganges and all the way there other Indian rivers. I'm not concerned about other Indian rivers, but I'm concerned about Ganges and Brahmaputra. And then of course it connects Tista, Dharla and everything. And there is, believe me, there is only one paragraph at the end of the uh, research paper, which deals with Bangladesh's, you know, concern about it. Now that is, these are the things which we have to look into. And of course the recent, you know, uh, before the election, the, all the thing that we happened in Assam about the citizenship and all. I can tell you that with Bangladesh's growth today, we might have, you know, people coming from Assam to look for job in Dhaka, but they will not go to Guwahati to look for job. So now that is that the type of hype, political hype, if some people wants to create, that will be bad for the relationship, but we want to move ahead. And thank you very much for this. These are the type of, uh, you know, conferences and seminars where we can exchange ideas and we can build up for a work for a better tomorrow than what we had in the past. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much uh, for your uh, question. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, the two presenters are taking note of the queries made to them. And uh, before I uh, uh, give the floor to you, sir, um, I'll also try to be as equitable uh, to our uh, online participant and, and, uh, and, and we'll come back to our floor uh, once I have uh, 
taken a couple of questions from the online participants. I have uh, a flag raised by Lieutenant General M. Harun Rashid. Uh, sir, you have the floor. Please uh, unmute yourself and, uh, and, and take the floor. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, congratulations to BISS for organizing this important seminar. And I'm very happy to see Dr. Gupta and uh, see Radha Dr. visiting Bangladesh. Uh, Radha is a usual visitor, but long time there's a break. Radha, welcome. And Dr. Gupta, you are also very welcome. And I had the rare privilege of talking to the members of the Vivekananda uh, Institute a few years back. Sir, in view of the time restriction imposed by the chairman, I would be very brief, only raise two issues. One issue is uh, the subject that I was looking forward as the uh, Ambassador Munshi also said, confluence of ideologies. I'm uh, constrained to say that none of the presenters have mentioned anything about the confluence of ideologies. Sir, you may please recall when we fought the Bangladesh War of Liberation, we fought it on an ideology. That is the Pakistan, which was based on religion. Against that, we wanted to establish a independent Bangladesh, which will nurture, if I say like this, that Bengali culture and tradition, Bengali nationalism, based on Bengali culture and language. And last, not the least, is about the religion we said, uh, mm, sorry, the particular terminology is not coming to me. Anyway, uh, we want a non-communal country. The father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib, in his address to the parliament have categorically said in our country, there will be no politics based on religion. Right, having said that, sir, when we look at our neighbor, the relationship we have developed since the war of liberation has gone on and on. But when we fought the war, at that time, India and 22 India is too different. Today, India doesn't talk about the neutral religion. They are more talking about the revival of the Hinduism. Or if we look at the NRC uh, and also the special privilege given to the non-Muslim migrating from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan. So with this special status, there is a doubt we are still in the same path or not. That's what I was more interested to see what are the ideologies we are confronting on uh, two countries? Sir, one, another issue I want to raise, basic in 1971. In November 1971, government of Bangladesh and government of India signed an agreement through which Joint Forces Command was formed. And General Jagjit Singh Aroda was detailed as the India Bangladesh Forces Command. Finally, India Bangladesh jointly brought the victory. This is what our perspective is. But our friends, those who have participated in Bangladesh War of Liberation, or even after that, when they write, they write when India liberated Bangladesh. I just received an email from one of my friends who has participated in India, uh, in Bangladesh. He writes that they crossed River Boira at midnight on 19th November 71 during the India Pakistan War 1971. And very recently, sir, when I visited India last November, I visited the National Memorial. And in the National Memorial, there are a number of battles which was fought in Bangladesh have been depicted. But unfortunately, the caption noted below, all of them says the operation during 1971 in East Pakistan. 
sir, I don't want to elaborate any more. If you see the writings of the Indian writers, even in the official booklets, it is India-Pakistan war. Now, being one of the participants of the War of Liberation, I would humbly request and tell that I did not fight an India-Pakistan war. I fought Bangladesh War of Liberation. And Joint Forces Command was play was done with the consent of the both the government. And if you look at the instrument of surrender signed by Niazi, it starts by saying all Pakistani forces located in Bangladesh, not in East Pakistan. Sir. All Pakistan forces located in Bangladesh agree to surrender to Lieutenant Jagjit Singh Aurora, the Joint Bangladesh India uh, India Bangladesh Forces Command. Now, how do we consider that 1971 war as the India Pakistan war in the Eastern Theater? Until and unless our existence and our sentiments are accepted by other party, I'm sure the confluence will be a little difficult. I had some more things to say, but the chairman has restricted me to two minutes. I have taken already more than two minutes. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, our uh, presenters and also those who are uh, sitting on the dais may wish to uh, respond to the many questions that have been raised and, and, and I've um, lost track, to be very honest, of all the very, very tricky questions. But, but these are the questions that needs to be addressed to because if you are looking into a, a very healthy and sustainable relationship, the, uh, the difficult things has to be addressed up front. And that's how we move into higher trajectory and higher level of, uh, of cooperation that we our leadership is aspiring for along with the people. Sir, uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, so you- yeah, my, my name is Ms. Siddiqui. I used to write in daily newspaper on economics and law. So um, I don't understand the ideologies. I understand Khudar Rajya Prithivi Goddamoy, Purnima Chardjano Relief Heredity. Let us, let us uh, uh, raise three points uh, for the, uh, our friends from India. Bangladesh is in the red list, along with the Pakistan, for overseas investment. So the, if any investment from Bangladesh to India require special scrutiny before approval of the investment. So why Bangladesh is in a red list of India for inve investment? The second is Bangladesh, Indian government has recently amended uh, their customs rule that the concern officer, deputy commissioner of customs, have the discretionary power to approve the invoice under zero tariff under SHAPTA Act. So it is a new addition to uh, customs rule of India, especially for the Shark countries, not only for the Bangladesh. And the third issue is uh, many products, food products, we are exporting to Western world, but not all products are approved by India. Indian standard institution. So why not we can mutually recognize standard institutes of Bangladesh and India? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that the list is getting uh, fairly long of the queries. I'll, I'll take in the second round uh, of question. Uh, may I now request our presenters uh, to, we'll start with uh, Dr. Sri Radha Dutta and, and followed by uh, Dr. Mahfuz. Uh, to respond to uh, some of the questions. Uh, you may come over to the uh, podium to respond, or if you wish to, uh, yeah, please. Um, yes, I did stay clear of ideology for the very simple reason what the Major Harun Rashid said, that uh, there were too many complexities and I wasn't willing to open a Pandora's box. We were given 10 minutes to speak. It's a subject that we could speak for 24 hours. Uh, because the ideological convergence that we found in 1971, the Bangladesh that was there in 1971 does not exist today. Uh, let's not make two bones about it. The India that ex was, was there in 1971 doesn't exist today. It's an evolving world. People will change. Ideologies move. Ideologies become more complex. So I really thought it's best. We, we have a broad convergence on secularism, on democracy, which keeps new nations going. I mean, let's not go back to it. Each one to their own beliefs, religion, and other ideals, but I think that was for me the safety out, or as I said, we weren't given too much time to speak on this. 
uh, I said defense was unprecedented simply because yes, of course, we all know about 1971 and the initial support that India did, but Bangladesh completely obliterated India from its any sector for 75. So what was there between 71 and 74 um, was something, of course, a continuation of the legacy of the you know, uh, war era. Uh, but subsequently, we've seen, and in many years, you know, I've been coming here, we've spoken about defense cooperation. We've never been able to sign that. Even now, it's, it's a 5 million uh, you know, line of credit, uh, more for exercises and joint other things. It's not that there's any hardware being uh, uh, you know, being offered here or being uh, suggested for. But I'm just saying that the whole idea of flagging defense was to say that today the two neighbors enjoy a comfort level, uh, which never was there earlier. I mean, we've all known uh, entire military hardware of China, of Bangladesh has been offered by China, right? Uh, so why were they buying so much of military hardware? Even if we say they were dumping it, there was an enemy country, right? Uh, let's not forget the fact that India was then the enemy country. Uh, there has been a move away from that. And I think we are very happy to acknowledge and accept that. Uh, but the point in national interest and in foreign policy is that it's evolving. Uh, what was true for 77, 80 is not true for 2022. The point is let's build on what is present and what is better for both the neighbors. And I think that, that was the sense I said that. And uh, yes, of course, there's plenty of issues too. Uh, we shared the bond hummy that I keep talking about. But that's exactly the point that there's likely to be both in India and in Bangladesh. There will be people who don't believe on that particular ideology, uh, belief or political beliefs for whatever reason, right or wrong. But the larger consensus both in Bangladesh and India is to build on the positive cooperative framework that we are embarked on. So that's the point. And I, again, uh, all of you know, I, you know, as a student of politics, I constantly work on irritants because if we don't clear out irritants, we can't work together. But this, I thought, was a very happy occasion. We are celebrating, commemorating 50 years. It was not a time to build that up. It's all there. Any book you pick up, you'll find that by Indian authors. Um, Sark, I said Sark was a non-starter for obvious reasons. I mean, all of us would be, and I keep saying this, the recall memory of regionalism in South Asia is Sark. BIMSTEC is still an unknown entity, despite the fact that you've just done a book on BIMSTEC. The whole idea is that it hasn't captured imagination. I'm the first one to acknowledge that. But what can you do with the organization that's not moving forward? Uh, for variety of reasons. Let's not, as I said, I'm sick of this blame game that you've done in South Asia for very long. It hasn't moved on. We've tried, even during pandemic, when Prime Minister Modi asked for a virtual summit um, to address humanitarian issues at that point of time, did all of you notice Pakistan behavior? I mean, at that point of crisis moment, if this is what a neighbor in South Asia does, how are we going to take SARC forward? So for now, we are looking at BIMSTEC, which I think, while it hasn't captured people's imagination, because day to do matters not, at a larger picture in terms of the first time we've had a security, a national security um, officers meeting, which is never done. And again, I keep stressing this point. Uh, and which is why Bangladesh and India stand at this. If 20, 2008, December, when Sheikh Hasina came to power, was voted to power, if she did not address India's security core concerns, the entire red carpet that rolled out would not have happened. We have to, in South Asia, address our security concerns mutually. You have to watch my back, and I promise to do the same for you, which is not the case, and which is also why much of these regionalism efforts have been initiated. So there are plenty, I mean, like, for instance, BBIN got signed the agreement in 2015. We were not able to do a MOU for reasons that Bhutan didn't trust India's truckers. Nepal is still wary of Indian truckers. I mean, why are we not having frank and open conversation? That's also another problem in South Asia. We like to use friendly words, uh, but while we come back to our own homes and say, oh, oh, you know, but that person does that to me. These are, of course, these are the forums that we can be free and frank, but today I thought it was a short event and we've had many occasions that based and elsewhere we do this. Uh, so I think, you know, India would be more than happy to ensure that SARC is functional, uh, but circumstances and other neighbors are not making it possible. So we obviously, but again, it doesn't mean this because BIMSTEC is there, SARC doesn't. If things change, political leadership change there. Uh, I'm sure both of the regional attempts in South Asia would be something that India would put a thrust on. Uh, on the river, yes. Um, 
you clearly read an article which was refereed or reviewed. It was one of those other articles. And I keep saying this, please, you know, go through articles which are coming from credible authors or at least have some process of, you know, reviewing in place. Uh, in India itself, interlinking of rivers is a dead subject. Yes, there was an attempt at some point of time, but at this point of time, there are only squabbles between the states. There is no question of this. I mean, very small attempt, but Brahmaputra, Ganges was never part of the interlinking uh, plan. So oh, clearly, I mean, I'm just saying that and I, whenever we have people, you know, reading something, we say be just a little cautious about, again, as I said, uh, you can be trolled, you can be, you know, given to misrepresent facts. So there is no interlinking happening at all just now. So there is completely out of the. Yes, I'm very aware and I'm very sensitive to the word that it's always been for very long, I would say, by many. Uh, I wouldn't say every Indian believed that that was India Pakistan uh, war, the 1971. Technically, India was fighting the Pakistan forces. So maybe that's what led to it. And I'm, I've been very conscious in all my writings about that. And I do understand the sensitivity because it was Bangladesh's liberation war. And that certainly is where we are standing here today, celebrating, you know, and, you know, taking it forward. But the point is there has been, because we've always pursued it because it was, uh, you know, Bangladesh was with India fighting together, the Pakistani forces. So it has been, and I, I don't know how much of it the past can be, can be, but I'm sure. And the fact that you're going to have a book launch on this, I promise you, you won't find the word Pakistan there. Uh, because I think it, it's, it's a, I think core ethos for all of us here that it was for Bangladesh that we were standing together, you know, addressing whatever the problems were on that kind of ground. Um, uh, what was the red light? I'm sorry, I can't read my own handwriting for most of the time. Uh, yes, um, there are some issues which don't get, I mean, there are, you know, paratariffs and other things. And I think these are very small issues. Let's not balloon them up. Uh, I'm very happy to consider them. I'm happy to you know, take it forward and put it to the right authorities. But as I said, if I started a list about the kind of things Bangladesh does to India or vice versa, it doesn't take us anywhere. Let's focus on what we can take forward. Of course, these little things, especially on trade and commerce. I think we have, and, I, I, and I'll state this again, 2014, India brought down most of the tariff and non-tariff barriers, right? Except for some contraband item, uh, which has helped balloon to the kind of bilateral trade, which is 11 plus billion, we enjoy that. When, and I, I was, I keep coming as all of you know, I'm very frequent visitor to Bangladesh. I didn't see much euphoria in anywhere, in the media, in the think tanks. And it's, it's a done thing that India promised, India delivered, late of course, but fine. 2017 China did similar bringing down of tariff barriers. Bangladesh went to town about it. And there was absolutely zero reference to the fact that India had done that five years ago. So I'm saying there is, but this is not for me to point this out to say that Bangladesh doesn't appreciate. It. I'm saying there are a group of, you know, a constituents in every country who would ride a particular wave. We are aware of that, but that doesn't take away again the kind of, uh, you know, framework that we are working on. So I'll, uh, I, I think I'm missing a few points, but um, I, I really can't read what I've scribbled. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Mahfouz, if you would like to respond. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to take just, just two minutes. Uh, so it's complementary in trade. When, if you see the kind of trade, so uh, the top products are RMG and there are, there are many other products in which there, there is a, in fact, uh, complementary in, in terms of the product within uh, inter-industry trade is, 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 in fact, in place. For example, we, we in fact use the, the uh, raw materials intermediate goods coming from India and then processed in here, we produce the final goods. And again, uh, by the buyers of the in, in India, so they are taking it uh, from Bangladesh and selling in, in, in India. So that's how the whole value chain is working and, and the complementary is taking place. So this is number one. Number two is the connectivity. So even though it's, it's already mentioned by Pita uh, CIN now, so it started with BBI and so we, are, we cannot, in fact, trust fully each other. So that's a very, in fact, unfortunate thing. But still, I mean, the, with the Indian line of credit, so things are going on in, in Ashugans, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, terminal. So there is a huge potential of using it uh, to uh, connect with the uh, Northeastern, in fact, Indian Northeastern uh, market, but still it's going, uh, it's not going on. 
and and in fact over utilization of of the some of the land ports like uh, in fact benapol land port so and bumra can be one of the viable alter alternative so it, it can be, it become a, an important issue the difficulties in in non in, in related to non tariff barriers i think the there is a frequent change in so it is in fact mentioned by the business people the exporter of bangladesh that there is a frequent change in the custom rules and procedures so that creates a, the a, a problem in fact regarding the perception of of the uh, in fact business people i mean especially the sme owners the, the small in fact uh, exporters when they want to export though they face a lot of difficulties like the certification of uh, health standards and other things so that's a problem but for the bigger ones I, I think they don't face that kind of problem. So it, it's going on. So that we need to, uh, in fact, flag on. And very interesting thing I, I'd like to say, so it's proposed by the Indian side that I mean, the joint, in fact, production of defense equipment and pharmaceutical products. I think that's a, an interesting area, if you know, that, that can be, in fact, a flag and that can be pursued. So that I think that related, the important issues regarding the standard, I think the SARSO is, is an uh, avenue even though we need in fact cooperation between the Bureau of Indian Standard and, and BSTI, but still vis-a-vis -vis that, I think SARSO is, a, is an uh, authority that can in fact uh, provide support to the Bangladeshi uh, goods to access both Indian market as well as the European market. So they have, a, a, even though they need, they also need uh, some technical support and the list of products that, uh, should be increased. So these are some of the things and I can come again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahfuz. Uh, uh, we will have a, a, a short uh, session here. Uh, in, in this session, I will uh, take three more questions and before we move on to our uh, two special guests to, to uh, listen to their uh, remarks. Uh, we'll start from the gentleman in the center. Thank Sir. you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Salahuddin Ahmed. I was a broadcaster, retired as a faculty and I also was a member of the Bangladesh Energy Regulatory Commission. Uh, I was amazed by the fact men, uh, faced by Dr. Kabir that the, there is a part of outward FDI and uh, India enjoys the position of being the fourth largest destination of uh, FDI, which is really interesting and uh, encouraging for me and probably many others to know here. Uh, I would wish that it gets a better and fuller meaning. The uh, Dr. Uh, Shash, uh, Dr. Sri Radha mentioned about the year, about the music uh, uh, play, be, uh, being played, in, played here, not only being played, being sung here, A.R. Rahman sang yesterday, last night, and our people also go there and much, pretty much acclaimed there. That is all ear to ear th thing. They sing, we listen through ear, but when it becomes soul to soul, then the relation becomes warmer, deeper and meaningful, I think. And then uh, raising a small question of why waters are not there or why this and that will not make someone, uh, in fact, have to face a beat being beaten the whole night and embracing death peacefully. No, not that uh, uh, negativity will probably uh, probably there if we are related soul to soul. And selection of scholarship is an important thing to me. Uh, we see many a people uh, visiting India, uh, going to going to India to the universities and other. Uh, tra uh, trainings, uh, but if this is the selection is spread uh, to different divisions, eight divisions of the country, then uh, I think uh, will be a little bit cumbersome for the uh, embassy authority, but this will give a, a better feeling that oh, not only the people of the capital or only known people are enjoying the scholarships, no. There are eight centers where even common people from uh, the uh, district or division areas, they're also uh, being selected. This will be a very important thing if they can practice. And 
I, this is my last thing. That day I saw a boy buying an Amul drink, milk, uh, which cost 80 rupees, 80 taka. And the similar bottle, not very different in quality, is only 20 taka. And the boy was asking me, Chacha, why this is 80 and ours is 40, ours is 20 only. Well, 30, 35 would be fine. So I didn't know about this program being held. Then I could have assured him that I'll ask you. Well, I am asking you, uh, maybe not only customs officials, not only business people, there are reasons or there are matters which can answer the question and make bring it down to 35 or 40 max, not 80. This is a small thing, but I probably could be of help to that boy. And he'll probably be buying it by 35 next, next month or something. So, sometime. Thank you, so, sir, for thank your you question. Uh, there was a hand raised, uh, sir. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Shahadat, retired. With my limited knowledge, in fact, I dare not to ask any questions against what both the speakers have spoken. But here, getting this August gathering, I would like to speak few words for our distinguished Indian guests. I am at the age of 60 which means I'm seeing our Indian friends listening Indian speaking for 60 years. And I started seeing Chinese people and Chinese friends for last 34 years. We have two eyes and I believe I always see India and China equally with my both eyes. But the fact is, we have only one heart and one mind. That often fluctuates which side. I had the opportunity to work in intelligence organization that too inside Chittagong Hill Tracks in the key pivoting. And I was also involved with Chittagong Hill Tracks Peace Treaty Dialogue. From our service in Sir Chitong Hill Tracks, besides when I was a Lieutenant Colonel, I was the D then BDR Battalion Commander twice, once at Srimangal, once at Chitogong Hill Tracks, Jaminipara. Actually, what I want to say a little bit of emotional, not against. Sir, if Dr. Uh, Sri uh, Radha, sir, uh, I, sir, I'm, I'm making short, sir. sir kindly, uh, we are running short of time. You're already over. So what Dr. Sir. Radha said that Bangladesh-India relationship can be of such, or Bangladesh-India together can do what Bangladesh-India can do, no other country can do. Actually, I take Hardy speaking very positively. Our common people now, whatever we have seen, Younger generations are going frequently to China for business, for study, and seeing that our Chinese friends are doing mega projects inside Bangladesh and they are being employed. So what I want to say that so that our minds, young minds of younger generation doesn't fly beyond our close borders, that's why if India directly help us to implement such mega projects, especially the Tista Barrage, and if India help us desperately so that Bangladesh, there is no fence deal inside Bangladesh, there is no cross-border firing, because these are the things our common people say. That's why if we work on the ground, the general people are now, despite we all know the help, assistance provided by India during our war of liberation, we have hosted huge amount of Bangladeshis. We are very much grateful. But now with that background, 
Indian assistance, I think, should be more than the assistance of China for the winning of common Bangladeshi people who are still speaking negatively sometimes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we'll uh, now go on to our online uh, participants. I have uh, Ambassador uh, Ashraf Udala. Uh, we requested for the floor, sir, you have the floor. And, and with that, we'll come to the end of the question and session and we'll request our two distinguished uh, um, member of sitting on, on the two end of the table to make their uh, views. Uh, I would give you uh, one minute uh, to both our presenters to respond to question raised and then we'll move on to this part. Uh, um, so you thank you very much, Chair, for uh, kindly giving me the, the floor. So uh, I see our Honorable State Minister. I see uh, you know my fellow freedom fighters, my great friend, uh, Major Arifin, who has spent almost his life you know, in building Bangladesh-India relationship. He's really a devotee and he believes in that. And I also see the, uh, General Harun, uh, former Army Chief of Staff, and he really has made some very valuable contribution. Uh, see, uh, I, I yesterday, I also heard uh, Dr. Sirada Dafta, uh, and uh, also I heard her today. Uh, I also, you know, listened to the, the panels, the discussion, the question coming in. Dr. Sirada made a very, very forceful, uh, you know, uh, deliberation uh, and, and talking about the positivities. And all these exercises that we are doing our between two countries is building in order to build a very, very strong bridge. When we talk about the bridge, we talk about the foundation, the pillars. I have absolutely no doubt that we have over the years built very, very strong pillars, unshakable strong pillars. And, and they have been built at the very highest level between our two countries. There is no doubt that today, when it comes to government to government relationship, there cannot be a second uh, you know, best relationship than what Bangladesh and India relationship enjoys. Having said that, when I say that about the bridge, you have the pillars, strong pillars, but what kind of material we use in those pillars that it, be, it would be able to carry the heavy loads. You know, when we talk about friendship, the friendship that, yes, we are talk, talking about all the positivities, but if you have listened to the you know, audience and the comments that come up, it will give a kind of sense that what is filtering into the people's mind. You know, we have millions of dollars. We have very good relationship between our government, but how does it percolate to the people level? What does people's you know, perception is? And, and I think uh, you know, what, what uh, you know, the, the, you know, the others have said that you have 500 million or billions of dollar business. Hardly the common people doesn't know it. They don't understand it. But if one person is skilled in the border, that makes the news. Today, we have the social media, the, the, the information traveling through social media. It doesn't need any visa. It doesn't need passport. Anything happens anywhere, whether in that country or in our country, it travels and that shapes people's you know, sort of perception. Talking about our relationship, the Honorable State Minister is here. I, I'm, I'm sure he will bear me out that today the Bangladesh's foreign policy has been structured in such a way that India holds perhaps the highest priority in designing our foreign policy. And I think that's my perception. I don't know what the Foreign Minister and others will say. Having said that, you know, my when you talk about the ideology, of course, we have confluence of ideology. And I very strongly believe that we have a confluence of ideology. We had a confluence of ideology and there has been a crack, uh, you know, there has been deficit over the years. And the, when I say, I, you know, the ideology, uh, confluence of ideology, this, this nation, this part of our region, we have lived, Muslims and Hindus and others, we have lived for thousands of years. 
And how did you live? We had respect for each other. We were friends to each other. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's what was the ideology. The ideology of democracy, that's what the two countries are striving for. So we have really the ideology. But having speech, how do you bring this ideologies back that it has been operating, it has been working for thousands of years in this land? So these are my these are my very 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 small you know comments and I I really uh, my my uh, you know the, the my only the last point that I will finish that we need to whatever we talk within the government among the government missionaries the ministers the prime ministers very fine they are very good but they have to reach to the common people. The common people have to understand, they have to feel that yes, our two countries are friends. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ambassador Ola, for your uh, observations and comments. Uh, uh, we'll now have uh, responses from uh, our two panelists. Uh, I request Dr. Uh, Kabir one minute, and then that will be followed by uh, Dr. Sri Radha, Dr. Kabir. Thank you once again for uh, giving me the floor. So just, just two, three things. One is the outward FDI. I think this is a very good start. So uh, fourth position is not that, uh, in fact, in terms of the money that is going I mean, outward, not that significant, but it's a, going on, the, mo the momentum is going on. So I think uh, that would create a significant impact in the, in the coming years. Uh, the uh, technical cooperation, as you understand, we, we are pursuing the blue economy, in fact, uh, through our uh, de developmental policies. I think there is a huge scope of mutual cooperation between the two countries. So we have the common natural, social, cultural, and political capital. So if we consider the, the water, so that could be a, a huge area of cooperation. In, we have a cooperation in the inland waterways, but we can have stronger cooperation in the, in the maritime area. So we, Bangladesh is now heading the IORA, so there's a huge is potential to, in scientific, in fact, development cooperation uh, between the two countries. And uh, I think I would say that we have, we should nurture, in fact, and strengthen the political capital. We have the political will, and it has to be transferred into the political capital in order to address many different issues. And, and we have to have the convergence uh, in, in the ideas and in, in and in fact, strengthen the confluence, we have the issue of uh, like border killing. But if you see that the statistics over the last two years, so even though Human Rights Watch in fact published the report and said that uh, between 2010 and uh, 2019, so it was about 1,165 border killing. But now if you see, the, there's a huge progress. You can hardly find any, any number or any, any news on the, on the border killing. So, and, and the technical cooperation, I think that should be the future of cooperation in the high tech, in the capital intensive uh, kind of product. So that, that we have to, uh, in, fact, uh, in fact, have the cooperation. And, and so this could be the area and the relationship in uh, unprecedented. If you see the, the kind of cooperation, uh, uh, kind of mutual, in fact, uh, in fact, understanding. So I think that has, has in fact, added a new height. So I think, that should be, in fact, uh, in fact, promoted uh, in order to have better, in fact, cooperation in the coming years. Thank you, Dr. Dutta. Um, I completely agree about the perception, um, and perception drives foreign policy. That's very true. Uh, but you know, in ba Bangladesh, uh, irrespective of where I go. Uh, what I'm doing, anybody and everybody has some opinion about India, right or wrong, whatever the case may be, but they are certainly aware of what is happening in India. I mean, they follow, watch our news more closely, our read our editorials more closely than many of us. And Bengalis are political creatures, as you all know. But the problem on the other side is India is vast. Haryana doesn't know what Gujarat is doing. Gujarat doesn't know what Pondicherry is doing. They have you know, very self enconced kind of living that Indians do. So obviously, even though there are some irritants on our front, and you, you know, we talk, the, I think Mahfuz talked about the migration or the labor force there, but it doesn't spill over in such a big way across to Bangladesh. On the other hand, everybody in Bangladesh, whether you're a shopkeeper, whether you're a researcher, whether you're retired 
army official, you have a point of view and you know you express it freely. So that obviously builds into this whole perception, but I'm, I'm still very convinced about the fact while there are negative perceptions, and there's bound to be. As I said, it, it, you can't iron out every differences. Once you iron out one difference, another one will come because we are dealing with such a broad spectrum now. Uh, it's impossible to address everything, but again, as I said, it's a work in progress. And I think the intention here on both sides is what we should work on. I think the intention is to work and, you know, you know, ensure how we can kind of make it a win-win cooperation. And the point about how, we, and I, I think that's something which all of us are very cognizant about, is all these multi-layered projects that we are doing, whether it's infrastructure, whether this uh, Dhaka mass transit transportation system, uh, various of your projects have a some kind of Indian touch to it, uh, which will always trickle down to the people finally. Most, most, most of these 2010 onwards, the project that you've done has a trickle down effect to the people. I just think that we don't convey that in the right tones. Uh, we don't tell them what is the collaborative. And I think, I don't know whether, you know, the, I think the media in Bangladesh should be more responsible in actually telling you that these are the, you know, things that are being undertaken together. And this is how you'll benefit, whether it's cargo movement, whether it's people to people. And I I've often wonder the kind of trains that we have, the kind of daily buses that we have, the kind of movement. And, you know, so there is obviously a lot more give and take that is happening. Besides that, there is some kind of misperception. But again, uh, both the leaders, both the states are very invested in each other, which hasn't happened before. I've always said that India stayed out of investing in South Asia, which is why uh, the interdependence in South Asia hasn't grown. That is going to change for sure. I mean, there is no two ways about that. And I think in that investment in South Asia capital is something that, you know, Bangladesh is very ably partner with, partnering with India. And I'm absolutely convinced that, you know, we will be able to iron out some but large picture is in place and we will continue to work together on a very, very positive platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sri Radha. And uh, I think both of our presenter uh, deserves a, a huge round of applause. Uh, uh, for, uh, first of all, for uh, um, extensive presentation, although we, were, uh, uh, we didn't do justice to them uh, by give, allotting a very short time. Uh, but we are also very uh, aware of their time constraint. So we had to uh, build this whole uh, thing into uh, a time frame of two hours. But also uh, a huge thanks to our, our uh, participants here, both online and, uh, and, uh, and those who are uh, physically uh, present. Uh, the questions raised are very pertinent. The question raised are, uh, are the questions that needs to be addressed in some way or other. Uh, uh, Sark is uh, has not moved uh, an inch. Sark has moved an uh, inch, but per perhaps it could have gone miles. Uh, being at uh, one point of time, uh, uh, DG Sark uh, myself has a, a, a good degree of attachment with the Sark and, and what Sark had started off with. Uh, we are very well aware of the uh, the difficulties that we face in South Asia, and uh, and as as you very rightly pointed out, we want to say everything nicely, and we never say no. Ah, we say every, everything, we start with inshallah, uh, we're not ne necessarily knowing that uh, we will be able to do uh, or deliver on the promise that we make. Uh, I remember uh, very early in, in, in my uh, professional career, uh, I had been uh, to India and one of a, a very uh, energetic young Indian diplomat had asked me, um, sir, what do, you, uh, what do we should do uh, to remove the uh, difficulties between Bangladesh and India. Uh, because as neighbors, we have uh, issues. As neighbors, we, we need to be together, uh, to prosper together. I said one, one single issue that can really uh, earn you a huge kudos is addressing the water concern of Bangladesh. Uh, we, uh, we do think that the, the perception can be uh, changed and, and a, a perception can be only changed through a very visible thing. The, the things that you have mentioned, the connectivity now, it benefits everyone. Uh, we are uh, the, the largest segment of foreign tourists in, Bang, uh, in India. 
I mean, uh, and, and medical tourists are uh, uh, own tourists, and you very rightly said no social uh, function uh, takes place in Bangla without being shopping in, 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 in India. Uh, so uh, the connectivity uh, between the people are very important. But per change, to change the perception, these, these big banner things, the optics are very important. Uh, I would not go further into it, but uh, again, a very big thank you to all of you. And, and uh, with that, may I now request uh, Lieutenant General R.K. Soni uh, to kindly take the floor uh, uh, to share his thoughts uh, as to how we uh, move forward and strengthen our relationship. And perhaps you would also like to reflect on your experience in our war of independence. Uh, General, you have the floor. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> I think it is indeed a privilege and an honor to be here in Bangladesh. Let me first introduce myself. I joined the army as a cadet when I was 16 years old and I retired at 60. So I have put on uniform for 44 years. My regiment consists of Hindus, Sikhs and Muslims. We have fought First World War, Second World War and all the wars we have fought with Pakistan, including in Bangladesh. And we have always carried our regimental flag, flag with honor and pride. I like to tell you that when 71 took place, I was a young major in the army headquarters. You know, the majors are a very expendable commodity, especially in a huge uh, headquarters. So we used to hear the planning taking place and we had a very charismatic general, General Sam Manaksha, amazing man, who told the, the political leader what they didn't want to hear. He was very frank about it. So we used to think about this particular operation, which was impending, which was going to take place, uh, that liberation war. And we were very skeptical, actually. Seriously, I want to tell you today that when we met in groups, we thought, would it be possible or not possible? But I think we made it happen. It is one of the most amazing events of, this, of not only the subcontinent, but of the world, that two countries got together. One, they helped each other. A lot which was suppressed a lot which was bullied, a lot which was brutalized, wanted to throw away the yoke of slavery. They wanted to become independent. And we helped them. You see, it is the valor of both sides. I won't go into the details. But an amazing happening where the Indian army went, Mukti Bani was there, but frankly, the people of Bangladesh, it was absolutely amazing. Those who came back from the war, they told me the valor of the common persons. A unarmed man, 20 years old, leading a column. Well, I think, I wish I could locate that man and we'll give him Paramveer Chakra. A man who took us and told us that they are lying in so and so place and was shot. I saw the brutalities. I heard about it. I couldn't go. I saw my course mates who, who went into the war and they came back chastened because they think this, they thought this couldn't happen, shouldn't happen to a lot. And because this lot, that is the Bangladeshis, decided that their culture was important, that their language was important, their literature was important. So I think it was an amazing moment. I feel proud that we helped this process where not only history was made, I think geography was made. A new nation was born. And that was something which we'll always carry with pride. 
irrespective of what name you give it. To me, to my colleagues, to my grandchildren, by the way, my both, my son is in the army, my son-in-law is also in the army. I tell my grandchildren that this is one of the proudest moments of the Indian army, that we help in the process of creating a nation because the nation wanted to be created. So I would like this to be understood, that this is a relationship where the blood was flown from both sides and nobody else can substitute it. I'm afraid Chinese can't. They can make bridges, they can make roads, but they can't have a relationship of hearts which you have got with you. But then subsequently, when I grew up, things went down and I'll be very frank with you. I was commanding four corps in Assam. There were problems, but for last 10, 12 years, it is an amazing change in the relationship. Of course, it's not a perfect relationship. There is no perfect relationship anywhere in the world. If somebody asked me that, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll have to say, because I'm quite handpacked, I'll say my relationship with my wife is perfect. But if you seriously ask me, even in the, any relationship, there are imperfections. There are problems. There is a requirement of continuous renewal. And I always believe in one thing, that if there are cribs, I will call it, say it in Urdu, complaints, that means the relationship is working. So I, you see, and I want to also tell you, I'm not a politician, as I told you, I'm a plain soldier. When I went to a PW camp, where we had, you know, these characters from Pakistan, and we had 98,000 of them, which were repatriated from Bangladesh. One of the majors, who is also a Punjabi, like me, he told me, beware of them. We are very happy that we have got rid of them. When I went to Pakistan three years ago, four years ago, it's a miserable place to go to. There was no economic activity. They have run down their thing. And what is, iron, what is irony is, we met some entrepreneurs in Pakistan who want to co come and open their business in Bangladesh. Can there be a better poetic justice than that? So when I see Bangladesh, I see vibrancy. Every time I come, traffic, of course, is horrible, but that you compete with daily. But otherwise, it's an amazing place to come to. Your buildings, your people, your level of prosperity, your chaps who go out. So I think these are very, very positive things. But I think we all in South Asia, somehow we are afflicted with a disease where we have to pick up faults. We do it in India, hell of a lot. You do it in Bangladesh. But I want to tell you one thing. This time when I came here, again, you find amazing changes. I think together we and Bangladesh jointly can do wonders. I see your boys and girls and I feel proud of them. They are very, very self-sufficient. I don't find any complexes in them. So I think that's a very positive point. So I will end this whole thing by saying that it's a beautiful relationship. We can do much more. And I also would like to say that in our relationship, it is very good that we come out and complain. But I like to tell you that let's continue sorting out these problems. And let's continue to remember that our relationship with you is more than commercial. Our relationship with you is more than trade. Our relationship with you is a relationship of blood, which I'm afraid no country can replace. 
only you can replace and we can replace. And I'm sure we will not like to replace us. Thank you so much. I mean, it's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, certainly, our relationship is uh, is born is a <coughs> the bond with blood and uh, and and uh, the expectation is only from the loved ones. We don't expect anything from the strangers, uh, and that's why uh, uh, the uh, the complaints, the shikayat, uh, will will be there as uh, as the love grows and and. Uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, if you hum allow me to humbly propose Sir, a standing ovation for Lieutenant General, I think everyone will please. join me. Well, sure. Uh, now request uh, Mr. ASM uh, Shamsul Arifin, Chairman, Bangladesh Foundation for Regional Studies, to kindly take the floor and sh share his uh, his comments with us. Anything left from me? <laughs> Honorable Chair, uh, next is Excellency, the Minister with us, and the distinguished panelist, guest, and the online. <laughs> Uh, those who are those who have joined us on online. Actually, uh, this uh, our guest from India, this Vivekananda International Foundation, the director and the other members, they have come to Bangladesh on our invitation with the support of Minister of Foreign Affairs to assess basically how best we can try to develop the relation between India and Bangladesh. And we have, uh, we have a time framing of three to four years as the younger generation coming to the national development program, particularly in the, you see the development uh, uh, going on in the country, we see the younger generation taking place in the, uh, in the politics, in the national building programs, and in the administration also. So in both the country has passed 50 years, so it is almost three generations has passed. So 1971, we take as a base of our relation. So how to transfer the 1971 to this new generation? Where we shed the blood together? Where we are together, as General Sani has said, to build a new nation. So we are taking a, a approach, particularly uh, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Gupta, when we met in Delhi, he proposed that let's study something, how best we can do it. Our good friend, Mr. Ashtabuddala said that uh, let's build a relationship, India and Bangladesh. India is the first nation, first country. Kerala doesn't know where is Bangladesh. Even Odisha may know little, but Telugu and the Goa and other places, those people doesn't know where is Bangladesh. How we should reach them? Our approach is that, that we consider that uh, India-Bangladesh relation, it is the surrounding countries of Bangladesh. But there is, India is in the other hand. 
So now we are trying how best we can approach the younger generation to the other states of India. The Bhagwanandi International Foundation has agreed, and uh, our honourable State Minister of Foreign Affairs, he is taking that spirit with us to go ahead. How best we can do that? So our panelists they have uh, discussed the, I think the fundamentals. And the process, I have nothing to say there. I am not expert on that. I am facilitating. We are the Bangladesh Foundation for Regional Studies. We are trying to facilitate the process with the support of our Minister of Foreign Affairs. All we do. We take the support of the ministry, and uh, I think so far, last twenty years, we are working together, and uh, we want to go ahead with that. So this mission, mission of this Bhagwanda International Foundation is to assess our people, the situation, and interact. We are trying to. As much as possible, the interaction with the people, in the government machineries, in the civil societies, and the intellectuals. This three four days, we will be with this, those people, and hope the director and the other people those that come from India. They will carry some values or some assessments, so that we can we can go ahead and find out the best ways to develop India-Bangladesh relation. It is not the relation of only the uh, the commercial sector, IT sector. Our main effort to People's to people's communication. You see, the southeastern, southeastern region, regional countries, the society-driven countries, the society decide the states. So, people is a major factor for relation. We have much better relation with the Indian government. I think the best now, as, as the panelists and the other people they spoke about, but again I say the Kerala people doesn't know what is Bangladesh is happening in Bangladesh. So we have to raise them. That is our effort. I think the director, Dr. Gupta, will speak on that, and our minister is here, who leads us on these subjects. We want to listen from them how best we can go it. Thank you very much, giving me some time, and thank you, base organizing such a wonderful interaction and getting the ideas, allowing people to think about. The best way how we can go. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Arifin, for uh, laying down the <coughs> important role that uh, your organization uh, is playing in strengthening and, and taking forward the relationship. Uh, thank you for your uh, comments. Uh, we would uh, now like to move on to the last segment of our uh, uh, of our uh, event today. Uh, before uh, we have uh, we move on to the uh, in, uh, the unveiling of a, a book uh, uh, on the existing bohemia between the two countries. Uh, but 
uh, before we do that, uh, may I now uh, request, and I have a pleasure of requesting Dr. Arvind Gupta, Director, uh, Vivekananda International Foundation, to kindly, uh, kindly take the floor. Dr. Gupta. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Minister, Mr. Arifin, distinguished audience, which consists of some very senior people who have studied and devoted their lime, time and life time to studying India-Bangladesh relations and have participated in bringing the bilateral relationship to uh, this level. Uh, I want to thank all of you uh, for uh, today's uh, discussion. And I must say that uh, this has been a, a wonderful experience for me. In some sense, a, uh, for me, a experience which will help me discover the true complexities and also the depth of uh, India-Bangladesh relations. General Sahni uh, described it as a relationship of blood. I think no matter what we discuss today and what we have discussed yesterday, whether it is the question of uh, NTBs, whether it is the question of uh, lack of trust, ups and downs, etc. But that one reality will not change. And I think at least when we approach India-Bangladesh relations, and that reality is that both of us fought for the liberation of Bangladesh, no matter what name we give to the war, that is not important. That's for us to, you know, everybody has a certain prism through which to look, but the sacrifices of millions of people, of hundreds of uh, thousands of Indian soldiers, that reality will never change. And I think uh, Major Arifin's mission that the spirit of 1971 should be understood and conveyed to the new generation, probably the third generation, he said, on both sides is extremely important. And the VIF is committed to that. I was very moved when somebody in the audience gave standing ovation to General Zahani who has seen it all, who has been a participant in that war, and not only that war, right from 1962, 65, and has contributed a great deal uh, to India nation building, and uh, who understand what a war means. And I think people who have participated in that war, we need to respect their sentiments. And I think the fact that they are today with us here and talking about their experiences, I think that is sufficient to tell us that India-Bangladesh relationship is unique. And when I say unique, it is unique. It is not a cliche. And we're so happy in the last few years, the Bangladesh government at the highest levels, the Bangladesh people, the Bangladesh media, the think tanks, and everyone else has honored the people who have participated in that war, and many of them are still around with us, fortunately. They have been, they have come here, they have been uh, honored, 
there have been uh, public uh, felicitations. And I think that has contributed a lot to the bon homi that uh, Shirada talks about in her book. So that's a very positive uh, development. So thank you very much for uh, you know, talking about those days. And I think uh, we should talk about them and continue to talk about them. And the rest is all ups and downs. The rest is, of course, everybody, all nations will follow their uh, national interests and they should follow because that's the basis of nation state. Nostalgia takes you that far. It is important to, for building up the people to people contact. But in the end, we have to live in uh, today's world realities. We have to look after our own interests. We have to look after each other's interests. We have to work in the regional uh, context. All that is there. That is the nitty gritty of uh, uh, diplomacy. So there's nothing wrong if uh, we disagree. And there's everything to celebrate if uh, we talk about today the diversification of relationship. And I remember uh, Mr. Kabir's uh, several presentations in the past 10 years ago, when he visited us at the IDSA, when I visited here about 10 years ago, we talked a lot about uh, uh, trade. That was a time 10 years ago when I came here to uh, this institution, great institution. We talked about the fact that we have not settled our uh, land boundaries, that our maritime boundaries had not been settled, that trade was one-sided, that there were non-tariff barriers, and so on and so forth. But if you now compare 10 years later, we have made some huge progress in terms of the settling of the uh, land boundaries and maritime boundaries. The fact that we had very serious concerns about the security, they are now behind us. There's been a massive change. And even when you talk about non-tariff barriers or India not giving uh, the you know, zero tariffs, I think a lot of those issues have been addressed. These are not small changes. And this has all happened in the last five to 10 years. And the fact at that time when I came, I think uh, the trade at that time was about one or $2 billion, perhaps uh, you will remember. And today we are talking about this year, perhaps if touching 15 to $16 billion. And that is only the beginning. Today, I think the constraints on trade is really connectivity because we simply don't have those kind of uh, you know, the infrastructure which can facilitate, let's say, $50 billion trade. Where is the infrastructure? So connectivity is very important. We're still talking about you know, Mangla and Chittagong, which will happen hopefully soon. So many issues are there, but we have to confront them. And it's good that we are talking about that. I mean, I really welcome all the comments which have been made because this will clarify our uh, uh, you know, uh, views about how to move forward. Uh, but transit was at that time a difficult concept, not acceptable. And today, yesterday, when we had uh, some discussions, they said, why is India not giving us connectivity from, say, Nepal to uh, India? So other way around now. My hope is that what is, whatever has happened in the last uh, few years, that is also genuinely benefited the common person on both sides, including in Bangladesh. If we really feel that this connectivity, this trade, and so many other things that we have talked about, if it has brought even some benefit to the common person, I think we are on a good uh, wicket and we can look forward to a, a, a very strong foundation having been laid, a very strong relationship. But if we are still, maybe in some areas, the critical mass is not there, perhaps we need to uh, build on that and bring that critical mass. If you look at the world around us today, it's not, you know, it's not just India, Bangladesh. Look at what is happening in the world, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in the Indo-Pacific. And India and Bangladesh, both are very much tied up to the developments uh, which are global, tied up to the developments uh, which are regional. And unfortunately, today the world is very unstable. 
what will happen tomorrow what will happen next 5 years or 10 years i think today we are more uncertain than we were say 5 years or 10 years ago this uncertainty should bring us together that's why the importance of uh, bimstrek it's not whether sark has worked or not worked i mean the chance was given to sark sark has not worked let's not go into uh, the uh, blame game in this and sark is still there it may still work i mean the it's not that uh, any country is against sark but what is the story of the last 10 or 15 years whether it in europe whether it in africa whether it's in central asia whether it is in indo pacific newer and newer mechanisms are being talked about mechanisms are being constructed to suit certain realities so i think new problems are arising we are uh, today uh, facing many new challenges and perhaps we should look at new models new mechanisms so i think uh, bimstrek is certainly today we had a virtual summit and the minister was very kind enough to uh, give us a small uh, glimpse of uh, what happened there it's a very positive development and this really i mean uh, bangladesh india nepal etc are really at the heart of uh, uh, the bimstrek so uh, bimstrek i'm sure its uh, time has come and uh, this will uh, uh, progress further so we fully uh, endorse that uh yeah a lot was uh, talked about uh, perceptions and uh, people to people contact see perception is a is a very difficult uh, uh, it's a perception management is a difficult game we can try and manage perceptions uh, and I, i think everybody tries to do that we wear good clothes when we come to uh event and so on but in the end people see through it so yes perception management is important we have to reach out to the young people we have to uh, do our events and so on but it is what is the reality on the ground that will really define the perception at least i am old fashioned in that way i don't say that perception defines the reality i feel the reality defines the perception but i also am ready to concede that sometimes perception reality they are a little bit intermixed but nevertheless i think uh, uh, it's the reality if we, if our relationship is to the mutual benefit i have no problems uh, with the uh, uh, you know the uh, perceptions perceptions will uh, take care of uh, themselves and what is the reality i think uh, uh, we talked about many positive things shirada gave the uh, big picture and uh, dr kabir talked about uh, the a huge diversification that is uh, taking place in india bangladesh relations particularly in the trade and economic side and i think this sipa that uh, about which a, a study i believe has been done and uh, uh, been submitted many of these issues can be brought in sipa today india in india also there is a major change in our uh, thinking we were earlier used to be a bit shy of uh, uh, trading agreements and so on but today government of india is talking about 10 major trading agreements bangladesh is one of them and we must really make most of it of course our negotiations sometimes take very long time uh, but we have surprised ourselves that with the uae we have already concluded uh, a uh, fta and with australia in the next few uh, weeks i think uh, it will be uh, signed and uh, with bangladesh we are uh, and uh, we are beginning but we must move fast a delay of even a few uh, weeks months or years uh, actually pushes back the opportunities which are already there today for instance if we had uh, uh, our mongla and uh, chitragong both etc uh, working in sops had been uh, uh implemented by now the trade would have probably gone up further and i was reading uh, in uh, i think one of our speeches given by a high commissioner or interview he gave to pratham walo some uh, months ago where he quoted a, a world bank study in which he said that if there were a seamless uh, uh, connectivity between uh, india and bangladesh uh, bangladesh's exports would have gone up by i think some 20% or something like that so it will to india so i think uh, uh, there is a now a uh, 
this moment also to reflect on what connectivity means and how we can reimagine connectivity. I think we have to move in the direction when there is far greater quantum of connectivity uh, than is the case today. We still have, you know, circumscribed connectivity straight through. It's only one uh, area, uh, one uh, checkpoint where about 70, 80% of uh, trade uh, takes place through now. But we know that if the trade is 10, 15 billion dollars or it becomes 20 or 30 billion dollars in the next 10 years, it's impossible to uh, do it through uh, one checkpoint. So obviously we have to uh, relook at the connectivity. Regional connectivity is very important and we have to, uh, we already are, uh, I believe uh, there is an agreement of going back uh, to 1976 between uh, India and Bangladesh, which talks about uh, providing connectivity between Bangladesh to Nepal and so on. And so we were thinking about these things earlier, but we didn't uh, quite implement these things. But now with the regional connectivity, I think uh, a lot uh, can be done, should be done, because not because it is in interest of uh, India or Bangladesh, etc. It's in interest of this vast population of uh, this region. So seamlessness, seamlessness in connectivity is very important, and uh, certainly. Uh, in India, there is a mindset change that has uh, been uh, talked about. I think even at the trade, we have to uh, probably look at uh, in a different fashion. Uh, trade and investment must uh, be linked. Uh, we have seen over the last uh, you know, the part of globalization, huge uh, supply chains uh, were uh, and value chains were uh, uh, made, but they were very long. And the COVID showed the uh, weakness and the vulnerability of uh, those supply chains. But can we not build supply chains in South Asia? So, and there is there are complementarities which uh, Dr. Kabir uh, talked about. So let's build on uh, uh, the supply chains which serve this region. So that South Asia integration, I think its idea has come and uh, we should certainly be focusing on. There are many th things that uh, we can um, you know, talk about, but, uh, I would like to uh, conclude by uh, saying that, yes, uh, there's any number of issues that we can talk about and we should talk about, and they should be candid and honest, but let's not forget the basic reality that we are neighbors and we are neighbors uh, which complement each other. Bangladesh has uh, made phenomenal strides uh, in development. Uh, Bangladesh is uh, no longer uh, enjoys the image that it used to enjoy. Uh, now it's a uh, middle income country, and we rejoice in uh, because that is really a contribution uh, to uh, uh, you know the regional uh, uh, prosperity also. More prosperity there is in the region, everybody will uh, benefit. So it's a wonderful uh, seeing uh, that uh, the strides that uh, Bangladesh uh, has made, and uh, uh, India and Bangladesh, along with Nepal, Bhutan, and other countries. I think can make a huge difference. Many new areas were talked about. Talked about, I think, blue economy you talked about, coastal shipping. I think the whole Bay of Bengal region, which used to be uh, in the uh, 18th and 19th century, there was so much of uh, trade which was taking place in the uh, Bay of Bengal region. I think we have to uh, re recover that. Uh, so Bay of Bengal region can be extremely, uh, it's a fertile area. It's a very industrious people, historically connected cultural, similar cultures, that is what uh, it is. And I think uh, uh, I'll just end uh, by saying that, uh, you know, this confluence of uh, ideologies on which there was this discussion, what is there to discuss about confluence of ideologies? I mean, I think somebody answered the question from uh, the audience itself. You have to just look at the history of uh, this region. There have been so many ideologies here. We are a civilization. This is a civilization, this is the longest living civilization in the world. We have assimilated everybody. We have contributed to the global good. And so there is only confluence and confluence. And even when uh, Prime Minister Abe of uh, Japan, former Prime Minister Abe, when he talked about uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific and he brought, he talked about the confluence of the two seas. You know, that's how the idea of Indo-Pacific came. So confluence, assimilations and uh, you know tolerance this is uh, a very much a part of our uh, uh, cultures so all this let's not call them ideologies i agree with you that ideologies sometimes you know can 
you know, create uh, rigidities. That is not. I think we are very uh, accommodating and accepting people. We fight with each other, but we live with each other also. So I think uh, 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 the very diversity uh, of the, this uh, subcontinent is our strength. And uh, I uh, would like to uh, differ uh, with, I think, some comment uh, which was uh, made uh, about uh, uh, the you know, uh, developments in India and how India has changed. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any change in my constitution. Uh, my constitution remains exactly what uh, it was in its uh, spirit. It's, uh, and I think India remains uh, the most diverse uh, country in the world. Uh, and yet it's uh, united uh, through uh, a very strong culture and that is how it will remain. Uh, I think uh, many of you follow India, but India being so huge, you can uh, try and follow either only the negative things or you can sometimes look at uh, the positive things also. And in the positivity, uh, the numbers itself are staggering. Sometimes I even myself uh, find it uh, difficult uh, to believe. When we talk about uh, a $5 trillion economy, this is not something which is uh, a, a dream. It is going to happen. Uh, when we look at uh, India emerging as uh, uh, a space uh, power, uh, which is comparable to that of the other countries, it is happening. When India is uh, among the strongest uh, pharma countries, it has already happened. When India is looking uh, and uh, you, you know, using the opportunities which have been given by COVID and the reform of the public health and the emphasis on public health and more uh, hospitals, more uh, uh, medical institutions, and more uh, uh, research and science and technology institutions, huge, huge resources are being devoted. When we talk about Atmanir Bharata in India, uh, that is not, that is depends. And that is also uh, practically every aspect of uh, high tech. So India today uh, is looking at itself with some uh, confidence, but that doesn't mean that we are overconfident. We know our problems. But we also realize that India will not do it alone, cannot do it alone. And it is in this journey which uh, India is now uh, embarking itself upon, uh, quite expecting some you know, uh, problems and challenges. But it is in this journey, I think everybody in the, uh, the subcontinent is uh, invited and India is reaching out. Today's India's foreign policy, when we say neighborhood first or act east, or look west, or Sagar, uh, these are uh, not mere uh, slogans. And uh, we at the VIF uh, will be very happy to engage uh, with uh, uh, your foundation, sir, with BIS, with whom, with whom I have uh, an old uh, relationship, and many other, and we'll be very happy to do that, so that we understand each other better. But our thing is not India alone. Prime Minister Modi talks about India as a force for global good. We are not talking about hegemonism. We are not talking about brick brother. These are old ideas of the past. If we clear our minds of that, because we know that we are in a Vasudev Kutumbakam, that is our philosophy. We are all in the same boat. But we have to be a force for global good. But that doesn't mean we neglect our own interest or anybody else's interest. So whether it is Vasudev uh, Kutumbakam, uh, which is, I think, uh, a very uh, important um, uh, today principle of India's foreign policy, or whether we say security and growth for all, Sagar, uh, it is not mere slogan. Today, India's uh, engagement with Africa, if you look at, uh, look, look at uh, simply some numbers, uh, and of course, if you look at, again, China, et cetera, you will come to some conclusion, but forget about that. But the way India is approaching, uh, 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 you know, the various regions of the world, including South Asia, it's a different story altogether. And so I think uh, just as we need to understand uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh also needs to understand India. So with those words, uh, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful uh, interaction. With you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Gupta.
statement and uh, may I now request uh, the Honorable State Minister Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammad Shariar Alam MP to kindly deliver his statement. Uh, respected Chair, uh, Dr. Arvind Gupta, uh, Lieutenant General R.K. Soni, uh, respected um, Valiant Freedom Fighter, um, Major uh, Richard Samsul Arifin, um, um, uh, fellows, uh, uh, friends, um, and uh, uh, we have a visiting delegation from uh, Vivekananda International Foundation. Uh, my colleagues from Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, um, and uh, uh, friends, uh, um, journalists and uh, uh, participants in uh, today's uh, uh, seminar. Uh, I think uh, uh, the previous speakers uh, uh, covered uh, uh, most of what I was about to say, but I'd like to thank all the uh, contributors uh, for a very engaging uh, session, uh, especially the question answer uh, was uh, um, was quite useful and uh, it, it's whether uh, some of us like it or not, uh, asking question and uh, um, and uh, responses uh, that was uh, provided uh, was quite befitting, and uh, uh, I guess uh, we we needed that as well. And uh, uh, fellow from uh, Bees and uh, um, from Vivekananda Sri Radha Datta uh, made a fantastic uh, presentation, uh, and uh, they had to do quite a bit of legwork as well today. Uh, to keep uh, our uh, uh, hungry participants uh, well fed with uh, clarifications and information, uh, it's it's very it's not easy uh, to try and uh, talk about India Bangladesh relationship in a in a short span of time, and I don't want to bore you uh, because uh, this has been already a good uh, uh, two and a half hours. Uh, of all of your valuable time, and we all have evening engagement. But uh, I'm absolutely delighted, and uh, thank you, Bis, for inviting me here. Uh, but of course, uh, I will uh, start my deliberation uh, by recalling uh, India's unprecedented uh, support uh, during uh, our War of Liberation. Uh, I'm not too sure why, but. Uh, uh, respected uh, General Haroon uh, raised a question, and uh, as a war veteran, uh, he knows very well that uh, uh, during November, December of 1971, it wasn't uh, in the bordering area of Bangladesh where India and Pakistan fought. There were uh, full-fledged uh, war took place in the Western Front of India as well. But uh, I would humbly request you to listen to the different deliberations that uh, Indian foreign ministers and prime minister Narendra Modi and also uh, Indian president in recent visit, uh, the comments and uh, deliberations that they have made. Uh, as far as we are concerned, it is our war of liberation. But of course, there were parallel war fought uh, in other fronts. So. Uh, you know, that is also true. So we can't uh, deny that. Uh, over the years, the mutual respect uh, for independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and strong political goodwill from both sides uh, contributed substantially uh, to blossoming uh, this uh, eternal friendship. Uh, in this regard, uh, I think a book is about to be launched, so I'll save that for Dr. Sridhar Dutta uh, to say a few words on that. But uh, 
the very visit by none other than father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Majibur Rahman, to India in 1972, uh, where Bangabundu declared that uh, the friendship between India and Bangladesh should remain intact forever, and no power on earth would be able to destroy it. So comparing this relationship or bringing a comp or try to bring a competition, you know, I hate to use this word, but uh, for our journalist uh, friend, uh, this is not a strictly uh, diplomatic meeting. This is a track to session. So please treat all my deliberation uh, accordingly. Uh, you know, I'm not too sure whether uh, you are getting what I'm trying to say here, but uh, I'll risk it anyways. Um, the the visit by the, uh, the, uh, the the then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in Dhaka in March 1972 uh, further cemented uh, our bilateral relationship. And I think we, some of us who are a little confused, need to be reminded uh, what Bangabundu had to say to Indira Gandhi the very day he landed, uh, albeit for a couple of hours only on his way back home after a good 10 months to uh, take back the Indian soldiers uh, or how quickly they'll be sent back home. And it took only just a couple of weeks. And I'm sure the researcher, uh, especially my colleagues at BIS will be able to substantiate that that was probably the fastest uh, uh, return uh, of uh, Mitro Bahini in the history of war or history of the world. Bilateral relations uh, got momentum uh, again, uh, but unfortunately, I think some of the question raised and some of the concerns or some of the doubts are attributed uh, towards, uh, to the fact that we are celebrating our uh, 50 uh, second uh, uh, Independence Day. Uh, and if we calculate quickly, it's three and a half hours of Bangabundu, two years of Bangabundu, five years of Sheikh Hasina during 1996 to 2001, and 13 years uh, in this term. Uh, that equates for about uh, 23 uh, or 22 years. So out of these 52 years, majority, 29 years, we were governed by anti-liberation forces or forces who, who had very little respect for our friends who supported and shed blood and laid down their lives during the war of liberation. So I do not wonder uh, that why some of us are still a little confused and go on to compare uh, uh, our relationship with India with any other relationship. Bilateral relations uh, got momentum, of course, uh, in 1996 because uh, of the more understanding uh, foreign policy adopted by India for dealing with its neighbor. Uh, the election of our military government led by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in 1996 and Prime Minister I.K. Gujral, many of you will remember that, uh, promulgated a new doctrine for Indian foreign policy, especially in regards to South Asia which emphasized the principle of non-reciprocity in its relation with its smaller neighbors when solving disputes. Coming to power again in 2008, our military government under dynamic uh, and visionary leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina adopted not only a pragmatic foreign policy, but uh, inducted a new era of friendship with India. Uh, in 2009-10 annual report of Ministry of External Affairs India for instance, it is noted that, I quote, bilateral relations between India and Bangladesh acquired new momentum following formation of the Grand Alliance government led by Prime Minister Hasina, Sheikh Hasina in January 2009. India continued to engage the government of Bangladesh on all important bilateral issues. Now, I know, uh, you know, we have a couple of friends uh, that we have uh, huge respect for who questioned about independence of Bangladesh's foreign policy. Uh, uh, may I just humbly uh, request him to recall the days when they were serving as a young diplomat, how independent their decisions were. But look at what we have done only day before yesterday. Take the voting 
in favor or against, even though it's not a vote of favor or against Russia or Ukraine, but look at how independent our decisions uh, to, uh, today under pragmatic leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. And I can cite numerous other examples. I'll save that debate for another day when I meet those gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, state visits by Honorable Prime Minister of, in the, uh, of uh, India, Sri uh, uh, Narendra Modi, and that too, uh, at the height of COVID last year, uh, March, I, uh, during our uh, Independence Day. And also Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovin. And again, history was made because I do not think there is any country in the world where they have sent their prime minister and president in the same calendar year to, a, to the same country. And in the, it's a history in Bangladesh as well. We never had the opportunity to host a prime minister and president of the same country in same calendar year. So that's, that's the depth and breadth of the relationship. And uh, that showcased the depth and breadth of a, a very unique rather uh, relationship, which has not only been forged in blood, but also been tested at times in the last 50 years. Both the countries have taken up uh, year long programs to celebrate 50 years of, uh, of our relationship and 50th anniversary. You know it all that we uh, had a joint program in 18 different cities in the globe. Uh, you know, some of them were led by Delhi, some of them were led by Dhaka. Apart from that, many more joint programs like Bangabandhu Bapu Digital Exhibition, unveiling postage stamps, commemorating 50 years of, and there are numerous other. I don't want to, you know, uh, go on and read out that list. Um, uh, witnessing rising uh, turmoil all around uh, its border of India and therefore a stable, uh, moderate Bangladesh as a partner is India's natural choice. And I'm sure no one in this room and uh, friends connected virtually will not uh, differ uh, here at least that it's a natural choice for India and a long lasting interest for them as well. Uh, constructive Indo-Bangladesh ties could be a major stabilizing factor in the South Asian region as a whole. And quite rightly, Prime Minister Modi remarked during recent visit to Dhaka, Bangladesh, I quote, Bangladesh is a strong example of development and change for the world. And India is Bangladesh's Shahojatri, fellow traveler in these efforts, unquote. India and Bangladesh are destined to grow together the bilateral economic ties. I think what Dr. Arvind Gupta was trying to suggest or explain that we all know that India as a subcontinent used to be the center uh, uh, of the, um, you know, cent center gravity of the world economics well, up until like 500, 600 years ago. And we all know what happened after that. But we also know that, the, you know, um, the talk is uh, kind of on air and it's, it's kind of very much in practice. The numbers suggest that this century is the Asian century. And if this is the Asian century, you know, South Asia and Southeast Asia is going to lead that development. And that's why India and Bangladesh needs to come even closer. Bangladesh is the biggest trading partner you know, of India and South Asia. On the other hand, India is the second uh, biggest trading partner of Bangladesh. If you are wondering, China is the biggest trading partner. According to a World Bank report, seamless transport connectivity between India and Bangladesh has a potential. Now I'm going to read this out again. According to a World Bank report, seamless, that's what Gupta suggested. Seamless transport connectivity between India and Bangladesh has a potential to increase national income by as much as 17% in Bangladesh and 8% in India. So connectivity is, is for both of our interests. Another study indicates a 297% increase, almost threefold increase in Bangladesh's export to India and 172% increase, almost double uh, to in, uh, in India exports to Bangladesh if transport connectivity improves and both the neighbors sign an FTA. Now I know FTA is a big deal, because as, as, as even though we are probably the 43rd largest economy of the world, we are yet to have uh, FTA with any country as such. 
uh, we are trialing or kind of not trialing, we're talking about uh, FTA negotiating with a couple of countries that you were aware. We were about to uh, sign it with uh, Sri Lanka, but that didn't happen. Uh, but uh, we have done a PTA with a very small economy, but our very significant neighbor, Bhutan. And I hope that will give enough confidence to our own um, uh, business uh, uh, associations and also uh, the government, the institutions who deals with uh, such tricky matters. But of course, this is a tool we need to explore uh, beyond 2026, especially when the uh, uh, um, uh, everything but arms arrangement with European Union uh, will, will, um, will not be in place. Uh, it is very encouraging uh, to the two countries are complementing uh, each other's economy. Uh, during pre-COVID time, India received the highest number of tourists from Bangladesh. And the number was 2.2 million, by far the highest. I was telling uh, Dr. Gupta during lunch that we have surpassed um, uh, citizens of United States of America who travels to India in the tune of 1.5 to 1.7 million. And we have surpassed that number in 2018 and the number reached to 2.2 million in 2019. And hence, you know, no wonder why India has set up uh, the largest visa processing center, or rather they had to, uh, to, to accommodate all these tourists. And also hospitals are, are treated the highest number of Bangladeshi patients. Thousands of Indians are working in various sectors in Bangladesh, contributing to our service sector. And Bangladesh, listen to this very carefully, Bangladesh is the fourth remittance earning country for India. So you see, there are these interdependence and you know, a mutual respect comes from that as well. Let Shushma Swaraj, uh, whom I respect a lot as a politician, and I must say, and I have said that time and again, that I personally have learned uh, quite a bit of thing from her, uh, former foreign minister of India, of course, uh, once said, uh, it's in Hindi, so, you know, bear with me. Uh, uh, Bangladesh That means, you know, neighbor first, but within that, Bangladesh comes first. That's what Let Shushma Swaraj uh, uh, told about uh, our relationship. From neighborhood first to act east, from connectivity to trade, from security to development, Dhaka's centrality to India's regional outlook is key not only for India realizing its own interest, but also for larger regional imperatives. This will be even more significant as India's desire to emerge as the locus of the Indo-Pacific narrative becomes even sharper in the coming years. I think uh, Dr. Gupta also uh, touched upon that. Uh, both traditional and non-traditional security issues uh, shaping this maritime geography will be uh, implicated in the evolving uh, Delhi Dhaka dynamic. Uh, our commonalities led us to have membership in different national uh, regional platforms such as SARC, BIMSTEC, IORA, BBIN, uh, Motor Vehicle Agreement. And you know, BBIN is an idea that was tabled by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina when uh, SARC Motor Vehicle Agreement uh, uh, kind of got stalled. And within even BBIN, we have Bhutan, who is not so willing uh, to go ahead with it. But let me make it uh, clear to you that uh, SARC uh, was born here, and we still hope that SARC will work one day. But unfortunately, uh, we have added one more member. And uh, at any given point of time, uh, we always have problem with uh, two countries, whether that be, it's always looks like Afghanistan plus one. And I don't want to name, you know, there might be, uh, a surprise this evening that, you know, there's a fresh turmoil in another new country. So, you know, how do you take and move with a region or a regional forum where, you know, uh, you don't have a stable government, but uh, we are still committed to that uh, uh, initiative. Uh, but, uh, you know, BIMS take a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, I, as a Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, I had the good fortune uh, to put my signature for the first time in formation of the SARC Secretariat in Nepidal during the second uh, summit. And uh, it's just a mere coincidence that we're talking about SARC and Bimstek. And today our leaders met uh, virtually uh, uh, and uh, I was present there as well with Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. But uh, at the same time today or this time around, it's the 25th anniversary of Bimstek. So how far Bimstek has traveled? If we complain about SARC and if we are too much hopeful about BIMSTEC, you know, BIMSTEC hasn't moved either. 
Uh, but uh, anyways, there are renewed enthusiasm and uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, good news is, and hopefully uh, BIMSTEC will uh, deliver better uh, compared to other initiatives. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with the Bay of Bengal in the south and the Himalayas in the north, Bangladesh and India essentially form one ecosystem uh, with the same waters, the same rivers, the same sediments even. As the closest neighbors uh, with so many shared cultural traits, it is also inevitable that events uh, uh, in one country creates ripple across the border in another country, irrespective of uh, whether there is a real justification for this. I think many of you uh, actually indicated uh, to those uh, issues uh, that uh, crosses border without visa and passports and uh, or rather through social media. And that's a challenge for us uh, or, or the policymaker or people who are involved in governing uh, our respective countries. Like many neighbors, uh, there are irritants uh, as well between Bangladesh and India, uh, no denial. The two countries are still not fully able to realize the potential of the relations, although many long pending land and uh, long pending uh, land and maritime border disputes have been resolved, you know, which was a very welcoming and good news, and we have celebrated that. The death toll of Bangladeshis on the border uh, has become a major strain on this bilateral engagement, and uh, no denial, and you know uh, that uh, um, that's uh, top in our agenda whenever we meet at any level. Uh, and uh, there were indications of that uh, even during this track two interaction today. The thorny water sharing issue of transboundary rivers and 54 of them uh, remains another issue uh, of debate uh, to Bangladesh-India ties. Uh, as a downstream country, uh, Bangladesh wants more water from the Tista River. Uh, we would also like to have a framework agreement for optimal utilization of water from six other rivers like, uh, you know, Mohori, uh, Manu, uh, Gumti, uh, Khoai, uh, Dudkumar and Dhalla Nodi. Uh, distinguished guests, on the 50th anniversary of Dhaka uh, uh, New Delhi ties, uh, it is the need of our to uh, introspect their strength and retrospect the mistakes. I think that should be the spirit. Uh, acknowledge the challenges and draw a roadmap uh, to take this relationship to new heights. It is in this overall context that Bangladesh today has become India's largest development partner in the world their largest trade partner in the region, and their most extensive and integrated government-to-government -government relationship. Over 75 separate dialogue mechanisms connect the two governments and people in an effort to build the strongest possible framework for a permanent partnership. The golden age in India-Bangladesh relations may just have begun. Challenges remain, but the leadership in the two countries has indeed ushered in a transformative moment uh, in bilateral relations and regional geopolitics. If we are able to leverage this unique moment effectively and realize the full potential of their partnership, we'll also be able to once again write another chapter in their shared destinies. Both the prime ministers are cognizant that the future of this relationship will be governed by a very different set of factors such as trade, connectivity, health, energy, advanced technology, artificial intelligence, ecology, and the aspiration of, the, of our youth. On a hopeful note, interpersonal relations and civil society contact groups between the two countries have increased. Ladies and gentlemen, in the case of Bangladesh's relations with India, civil society play a vital role in sensitizing the mutual concerns and influencing the government policy. While the state level response reflects a clear focus on economic diplomacy and bilateral relations partnership, perspective of civil society remains explicit and polarized. I think here we need to do some work. And bees and many of you presented today can play a very important role. And so do our Vivekananda International Foundation in this respect. As for Bangladesh-India relations from civil society perspective, one of the key strengths is the decades of old strong people-to-people -people contacts. Bangladesh shares geographical Proximity and cultural similarity, especially language, music, literature, and food uh, with the bordering state of India. In addition, the introduction of border hearts, increasing connectivity by road, railway, air, and water, easing of visa requirements are helping to increase people-to-people -people contact between Bangladesh and India. 
Finally, uh, I would say the civil society of both countries is contributing to the relationship, but we expect more from them in opinion formation for consolidating the Bomi. There are a lot of negative stories, write-up, propaganda and narratives on our relationship being published and posted in social media by some quarters to tarnish the trust and respect between our friendly countries. If pain is mightier than sword, then our researcher, academicians, think tanks can try to publish their write-ups articles on our relationship and friendship, which is known to be the role model for neighborhood diplomacy. We should try to project more on our successes rather than our failures and blaming each other for narrow political gains. We attended the historic city of Shimla just um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was 10th round of, um, I was there as well, 10th round Bangladesh India dialogue and look forward to arranging next round in Bangladesh in due course. We hope the civil society and think tank of our country would contribute in deepening the bonding between the two countries through their research and write-ups. Distinguished guests, the two countries engaged with each other even at the highest level when the whole world was stalled because of COVID pandemic. Rightly indeed, the current phase of our relations is called the golden chapter and the new chapter which are unfolding shows the sign of immense possibility. এই কাজে এগিয়ে আসতে হবে সহযোগিতা করতে হবে ক্ষুদ্র রাজনৈতিক স্বার্থে বা কারো দ্বারা প্রভাবিত হয়ে এরকম একটা ঐতিহাসিক বন্ধন এবং এই সম্ভাবনাকে আমরা যেন দূরে ঠেলে না দেই এই ব্যাপারে সবাইকে সাবধান থাকতে হবে মে বাংলাদেশ ইন্ডিয়া রিলেশনশিপ লিভ ফরএভার বাংলাদেশ ভারত মৈত্রী চিরজীবী হোক জয় বাংলা জয় বঙ্গবন্ধু সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, Honorable State Minister, for your uh, very insightful and, and detailed uh, statement. And uh, uh, I was uh, supposed to uh, do a concluding uh, remarks, but I would dare do, not do that. Uh, so uh, we would uh, now move on to the last segment of our uh, engagement today, and that is the uh, launching of uh, of uh, a book which has been edi edited uh, by uh, Dr. Sri Radha and I've got a number of uh, uh, her own writings there. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Radha to come no, no, over? Okay, so um ha, sure, sure. So, so we'll we'll uh, unveil the uh, book and uh, I'll request uh, Dr. Radha to come up. Yeah, and it will buy a few. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, please. Thank you. 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 Uh, thank you for this uh, happy occasion, for the chance to unveil the book here. Uh, the inspiration behind this book is, of course, Major Arifin, because uh, 
he, you know, this whole bilateral dialogue that we have, and he, we were very keen on doing something jointly, and this was one of them. And uh, he, of course, came ahead and produced his book of documents much earlier than the timeline that we had thought of ourselves. Uh, but anyway, and I was there for that inaugural, and uh, that was a wonderful uh, volume too, and I'm sure some of you had a look at that. Uh, so we basically were also trying to do a similar thing from India that we uh, put a lot of these documents together for the younger generation. But given the COVID conditions, the fact that our, uh, you know, most of these archival uh, libraries were not functioning well, uh, that became quite a bit of a challenge. But again, this book is really unique for the first time at Vivekananda International Foundation. Uh, me and my colleagues got together on a joint project. We've never done this before. So for me, it's really a joyous occasion that I was able to work with this young team virtually, practically, because we were not meeting because of the uh, COVID condition. And we put together something that we thought, for me, the whole idea of putting this book on the liberation war is that enough material on the 1971, heavy duty research work. But what I realized over the years was that the generation in Bangladesh and in India uh, were not often, and quite clearly so, I mean, people who are interested in political science, international affairs is all right, but many of us who are, you know, removed from this world of academia and research, for them, the whole concept and the ethos of the liberation war was dimming. Uh, this essentially was an easy to read, quick off the table, jostle your memory attempt to keep the younger generation on both sides engaged with something which was a core, again, you know, underlying process of India and Bangladesh. Uh, so what we did was that we, I realized that, you know, I needed to, the liberation war, most of the research work on liberation war is very dense work. It's impossible to get through somebody who's not interested in deep history. But here again, trying to capture the young imagination, I'm not sure I, how successful I will be, but I really hope so. And there's been suggestions that we translate that in Bengali to have a better outreach. We hope to do that too. So essentially this book captures a uh, the initial period, the war period where, you know, India got involved and how they were able to manage the operation. So there's one specific chapter, which is prelude to the war. Uh, then we come into the operation. Again, we've done it very, very quickly. We didn't go into detailing. So I'm sure many of my friends from the armed forces would so you miss that out and you miss that out. We miss that out deliberately to keep the readers engaged. The more detailing we do, they will lose sight. But the point here was to keep the big picture again in place. And for me, what I realized while doing work and looking at some of the declassified papers and um, you know archival material that we were able to manage was what the dream was again, which I repeated a little earlier in 1971, uh, got actualized post 2010. So what I've done is here, um, while looking at the war and largely through an Indian prism, because we were writing it from India, the point here is I also want to look at the bilateral relation. And I've argued strongly here is that these years that we missed out, 75 to 2008 maybe, uh, hasn't been good for anyone. And I genuinely believe and I hope that despite whatever, I mean, we have so many common 4,000 kilometers of cross borders and so many things that they want to be returns. But the point is here that what we had as partners during the 71 and subsequently should not get, you know, uh, irrespective of what government comes in Dhaka, what government does in New Delhi. The whole idea of cooperation framework is actually reaching out to people. It's the government or the state is not actually the one who's really affected. It's actually the common people. So why should common people miss out on the dividends just because some political leaders don't see eye to eye, which is exactly what happened between the India and Bangladesh. So I'm hopeful and I'm, you know, the whole idea was to see how we can see through a cosm, common prism. So the perspective here, and one thing which I think hasn't been done before, I tried to annotate the first agreement that India and Bangladesh signed, which is peace and cooperation. Of course, very controversial. I've tried to address controversy given my research background, and which I think is the most critical uh, treaty signed between the two states in the recent time is the 2010 joint communique. So I annotated that to give the younger generation a flavor of what was there in the past and what is there now. And I've concluded with a very upbeat chapter. I'm aware of the pitfalls. I write on it constantly. But this was a really a feel good uh, 
capturing the young generation mind attempt at keeping the liberation one bilateral relations. I hope all of you will read it. Thank you. Thank you. Would, would that be uh, 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 from Friends of Bangladesh? Uh, we have a small token to this BIS, Chairman BIS, uh, our Honorable uh, State Minister of Foreign Affairs are requesting him to hand over the small token of Friends of Bangladesh. Uh, and, and a book, the same time we produce uh, Bangladesh at 50, uh, we produced little early, so uh, handing over the book to the BIS uh, chairman. Thank you very much. Hmm? Yeah, same time, actually, uh, uh, simultaneously, these two books are supposed to be out. So we did it little early, and Miss Radha, she has done it. Anything you want to give? Huh? Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Gupta having some presentation for uh, and the chairman Biss, uh, a small gift from uh, the Vivekan Foundation and another to the Honorable Minister. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Chairman Bish. And, uh, and a little moment from uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs for our visiting guest, including Sri Radha. Thank you. One, one uh, uh, more minute I will take uh, from your time. Just, just to thank uh, everyone, our distinguished guests here, the Honorable State Minister, and uh, our distinguished participant here uh, for your uh, for participation. Uh, I also wish to uh, invite you for uh, another exciting round of uh, discussion tomorrow. Uh, we will have uh, the new ambassador uh, on Indo-Pacific, special envoy. Uh, on Indo-Pacific, we will be discussing the uh, EU strategy for the Indo-Pacific. You are most warmly welcome uh, for tomorrow's event. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I kindly